Greetings, adventurers! I am your friendly neighborhood dungeon master, otherwise known as the Ethan DM, and this is Cold Hard Witch. So, this is going to be the, for those of you who don't know, the playthrough of the Rime of the Frost Maiden uh, uh, module by D&D, otherwise known as Texas, currently. <laughs> um... Uh, this is brought to you, of course, by Lawful Stupid RPG. Gather around the campfire, my friends. Joining us tonight, we have Buddy playing Xander, the Blade Singer. Lee playing Herrick, the Cleric. Finally, Nathan, the Professor Warlock. Uh, Amy Fariel, our dro rogue, is actually out this game, so we'll be playing her proxy. Uh, Madeline, of course, plays Zalvana the Bard and is back for this game. And last but never least in my heart is Rodney playing Flynn the Psionic Fighter. It, would, that, would that be you, a Psy Fighter? Uh, yeah, ah. be a Psy. <laughs> So. <laughs> Buddy hates it, so I love it more. <laughs> a, a shake of the head, and we're off to the races. All oh, right. I thought yeah, we were remember friends. Buddy. <laughs> remember, Buddy had the option to like just stay frozen at home, and he was like, "No, no. This. This, this is what I need. This is what I need." Yeah. All right, friends. So let us gather around the campfire. So, when we last left our party, they had just delved into the Cauldron Caverns. Inside, they went ahead and uh, t <laughs> they tackled a, a pack of dire wolves by throwing meat at them, various and sundry meat, Flynn's included. Um, they also went ahead and uh, tackled a waterfall head-on, well, Herrick did, um, to great success. Uh, then things got a little weird when they released a water weird. Uh, shortly after that, they decided to go ahead and pick a bone with a giant frost skeleton, uh, frost giant skeleton, and that is where we meet the party right now. Having just succeeded in taking down a frost giant skeleton, they are inside the caverns and hopefully uh, surviving the rest of this encounter. Dun, dun. Duh. I mean, I was kind of hoping that was the main boss of the whole game. Was that was that not the case? Yeah, right. And the rhyme is over. Congrats! <laughs> <Yay. laughs> We've uh, done it. You've won. We did things. <laughs> you have dungeoned the dragon. Huzzah! <laughs> All right, friends. So, so I mean, obviously, the kind of first course of business is. Did he? Is there anything that we can find on him to tell us about him, or like five thousand platinum pieces, or anything like that? You know. So, uh, fortunately, unfortunately, uh, he is a giant frost skeleton. So, uh, does he not have like like scraps of clothing or like a bandolier? He, he does. He something? does. But like his his bits and bobs are all sort of built for giant size, um, which I. Yeah, and and so like anything that he has, it, it's not exactly great quality. But because it was swung with such force, um, now of course, because this is D and D, um, and we uh, <laughs> we do like looting the dead. Can I quit you um, here? <laughs> if you guys want to go ahead and uh, pick through some of the corpses, uh, I, I wouldn't. <laughs> as, as as I say this, as a soon to be father to be, I, I wouldn't say no. So. Uh, I feel um, like last time you said all this stuff was pretty low quality. It looked like I need to. Ab yeah, absolutely. Like uh, it, it, it looks like a lot of the victims here have either been sort of left uh, to their uh, left to sort of rot, and, and certainly uh, no adventuring party has left behind some sort of mystical magical weapon. It looks like it's um, for the most part uh, commoner uh, items and, and clothing up to the sort. Um, but if you wanted to go ahead and try to pick pick through the bones, I, I had a player who would love to do that just recently. But um, I, I leave it to you, party. You can venture forth or uh, or, or, or take a moment to uh, to see if there's anything worthwhile. I'm thinking that last week you're like, well, it's kind of rotting flesh and it smells really bad in here, and so you know, and it's also like, like stew. The stew is like coming from further in the caves. Yes, right? yeah. So that that stew is still drifting through. You don't see the source of the stew, which 
you assume to be some sort of pot kettle. Gross. Um, no, no one makes stew in a kettle. That's not real. Okay. Like a, um, like a tea kettle? Yeah, right? That'd be a kettle <laughs> of fish right This there. tea is chunky. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, it hurts, mate. It hurts. <laughs> it hurts. <laughs> it hurts the soul. <laughs> well, Chunky T is now the is the title of this episode so far. Actually, uh, Chunky T is the title is the name of my pop punk band from high school. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, right. uh, yes, DM. We are we are searching some bodies. All right, get, so everyone, uh, I get this thing back on back on. If you're track. searching for a body, if you're searching if you're searching for a body, uh, go ahead and roll a d12 for me. Uh, ooh, a d12. All of us. Yeah, that one that no one in this game uses. Yeah. I do in my uh, Toll the Dead. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Well, all right. So Xander, with an eight, you find a silken cord amulet. It's uh, crafted from iron to actually resemble uh, what looks like a snowflake. Silken cord amulet. Yeah. What, are we all rolling or? Zilvana, with a nine, you find a corroded metal circlet, and it will provide your forehead with protection. So oh. do this. It won't hurt. <laughs> just your forehead, though. That's yeah, it. just your forehead. Uh, Flynn, with a two, you find... Go ahead and roll a d6. Ooh, 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 okay. Or half a d12. You find the curse. <laughs> you lose three levels. Yeah, right. That's oh. how much strength. Oh. <laughs> no, um, so uh, Flynn, with you, with that roll of a d6, you find three mushrooms growing inside a skull. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna just put them in my bag and yeah, right, because that's <laughs> that's not weird. Yeah, uh, that's great. Herrick, with a four, you find uh, uh, armor scraps. There's a, an assortment of leather and a little bit of uh, looks like some broken chain mail, uh, but it's pretty rusty. Yeah. You could try to patch it or salvage it, but um, it's 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 pieces. Okay. Uh, and then f- I also had a two. A two. Okay, very well. Then roll a d6, Professor. Five. You find five mushrooms growing inside a skull. Excellent. All right. Wait, is, do I have to roll a d6 now? What's happening? Is that everybody? That's One, two. Three, four. It's everyone but Feriel. Right, 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 right. Which, yeah, I suppose, <laughs> her being the rogue, she would most definitely roll. So she's going to roll. A t- <laughs> she's also going to find some mushrooms. <laughs> shrooms, 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 shrooms. All right, so. Uh, well, guess what we got for dinner tonight? Yeah. Right. <laughs> mm, brain like, shrooms. Brain oh, fungus. Shroom. It'll make you smarter. Shroom sandwiches, shroom stew, shroom <laughs> salad. All right. Shroom sandwiches. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so uh, Feriel finds two mushrooms growing inside the skull. Apparently there's a weird little patch of mushrooms that... I mean, this was just a fun guy. (laughs) Ah. Love it. All right, friends. So uh, with that, the sort of the the gloom of the cave around you and the the sort of the frozen crystals of crimson that dot the floor where the bodies were butchered and the piles of bones that you stand around, including the, the, the absolutely blasted skull of the frost giant, um, you still smell the aroma drifting down from the end of the hallway here, where the blood seems to streak uh, along the floor. Party. So it, that's where I was heading, is I, I wanted to examine the, uh, the blood smears. And- excellent. See if I could figure out where they're heading. And I think that uh, what we had been doing, DM, was uh, Feriel had been yeah. uh, stealth creeping to kind of see what was up ahead a little bit. Oh, absolutely. Stealth yeah, I was, I was just moving her up, so I'll have Feriel. And uh, can you move um, Tempest up just because you haven't given me control of her yet? Uh, um, I want to actually take a closer look at this mushroom. Give it a give it a sniff. Give it a lick. Yeah. All right. You know where that's been, right? It's... Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just examine it. All right, roll a d20. Straight d20. Yeah. Did, wait, did you lick it? Yes. Okay, roll a d20. No. You about to get high. 
<laughs> because I got her. 16. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, so with that, yeah, that album. Of, with that roll of a 16, uh, you, you, there seems to be no effect. They seem to be just perfectly edible mushrooms. Let me have a look. <laughs> I, don't, I don't lick it, Bob. Sorry. Yeah, I'd say these, these seem quite fine, despite coming from a humanoid skull. Hmm. As previously stated, he was a fun guy. Can I? Uh, can I check? Take a look, Herrick. If they no, are hand actually, one to Herrick. Uh, yeah. Is my mind? Yeah, Herrick. Uh, do you want to go ahead and uh, examine them? Yeah. So All right. So, uh, with oh, what? Well, What's 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 what would you consider to be a cooking skill? Survival, I think, would be a, a good skill to use here. But okay, yeah, I would concur with that. So go ahead and roll me a survival. Oh, natural twenty. A critical survival. All well, right. So uh, with that twenty-six critical success, uh, yeah, these are just plain. I uh, say, uh, uh, brown mushrooms. They seem to be growing, uh, otherwise known as bone shrooms. Um, they typically grow out of corpses and are actually relatively harmless. In fact, you know a recipe wherein uh, you can help your party recover HP uh, if you uh, cook with these mushrooms. So. Give me all the mushrooms. Here, here, take it. <laughs> How many are there? I've got five. I've got three. We've got nine altogether, haven't we? And then Fariel has two. So, yeah. So, 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 five, so ten, ten total, ten, sounds ten, like? Ten. Yeah, okay. ten. I have no shrooms. I have yeah. no shrooms. All right. Uh, so Fariel sort of takes a moment to uh, say, if you want to take them, Herrick, I'll uh, delete them out of my out of my inventory here. Out of them now. Cool. So Fariel will creep up here to basically this little um, sort of split in the. Um, in the uh, in the sort of the stone as she, she starts to move forward, and she says, "The blood seems to be continue to travel to the east, to the north. I, I I can't quite tell, but it looks like the trail drops off. The on the eastern is that or the on the east? Do those stairs go down? It looks like yeah. It looks like it descends." Can we hear the same howling wind in here that we were hearing outside? Is that wind in the caves, or is it just was it just that outside? wind is in the caves? Yes. Okay. So it it's, it sort of whips out and throughout uh, each of the caverns as you sort of walk through. Sometimes it, it cuts through uh, your path uh, through the path that you that you're going through, and other times it seems to come from other directions. It doesn't okay. seem to vary too much in pitch, um, but in the same way that like the wind will have that sort of. The howling sort of has that same sort of um, uh, variance in its meter. Okay. Uh, is there any, can we tell which direction the wind is coming from, or is it just everywhere gusting about? It does seem to be coming uh, from the north of the caverns and sort of whipping out. So as you guys were walking into the caves, you were getting hit. You're kind of walking into uh, the howling. Though uh, here in this place, it seems as if the wind has sort of been uh, cut off a little bit, as if the, it sort of comes out and through um, the frozen river that you were uh, walking along. And while occasionally you hear, you feel the gusts kind of cutting down through the caverns that you're in, it looks like most of it is, is guided by that river. Can we tell which uh, is, is the stew smell from both, um, from both avenues? Mm. Uh, I'm going to have a fairy owl roll, a... Survival check. Does anyone else have survival skill? Yeah. I think Herrick does, yeah. Yeah. All right, lovely, lovely. Uh, let's say, if you are willing, Herrick, mm -hmm. so you want to give her advantage on that? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Lovely. All right, so she'll roll that for you. And with that roll of a 22 on that survival, she sort of stops, gazes down it's that way. It's definitely to the south. The smell is stronger there. Well, 
I was gonna say, let's just let's creep. You said it drops off up here. Let's let's kind of take a look and see what that means. Real slow and gentle, though. All right. Fairy Owl kind of looks and says, uh, "Yeah, that's that's where I was headed to. I wanted to I mean, explore I, I, this drop off." Yeah, as the professor starts to get past her, she says, "Careful, professor." Mm-hmm. I'm all right. I'm all right. I've got my books. <laughs> oh, oh, good. I've, I've, I've got some books and a and a small stick. I should be <laughs> should be fine. Looks back at Flynn and goes, "Can he still not see in the dark?" I don't think he can. But you know, the nope. book has a the stick hasn't failed him so far. No, so. I've got a, I've got produce flame. So I've got the little the fireball back in my hand at this point. So you, so you got the stick and the flame, and you're sitting yeah. there stabbing the snow. That's good. Yep. No, that's good. Holding a fireball in one hand, shillelagh in the other. She's like, "Of course, leave it to a man to come up with the best plan possible." Yep. <laughs> stabbing the snow. Moving Check forward. checks out. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, that sounds about right. Oh, don't worry. He's learned. He knows what he's talking about. All right. I went to college. All right. Well, hopefully um, you didn't go to the school of hard knocks because that that drops off about 20 feet in front of us. And uh, Professor, as you sort of start to... uh, So what's the radius on that produced flame that you've got? Oh, uh, I believe it's not a lot. (laughs) <laughs> God, I should, man, if I, no, that's, that's how we roll here folks we don't bother with specific numbers we let not a lot a little bit a bunch so uh bright light oh, for, ten, I, bright I light for 10 feet and dim light for an additional 10 so okay. 20 20 total but only 10 of it is bright So I can just make out the edge here, but I would I do want to creep closer. Okay, excellent. So you I get uh, to about about there. I'll give myself a good five feet from the edge. All right, good. And you said that produce flame uh, is about twenty feet. I had a aura set. You did. All right. So with that twenty feet, you see sort of this. Sure enough, the 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 cliff edge does actually drop off away from you a little bit, and. Uh, Fairy is going to go ahead and move up next to you. There you go. Is is the howling wind so much that we can kind of softly speak to each other even at this distance without probably being overheard? So weirdly enough, uh, as you come up to this part of the cave, this l- what seems to be like a lake or a reservoir for the river that you had climbed earlier... Uh, it's it's eerily quiet, as if there's a serenity to the place. Mm, that seems to not bode well. I don't like that at all. Um, <laughs> serenity. Mm-hmm. Serenity. <laughs> Evil. Uh, can I can I motion for the two of them to come back? Yeah, yeah. Fairy, I will. Uh, we'll look back over her shoulders. Come on, Professor. Bring your stick. <laughs> <laughs> this place is odd. Um, well, now some... it's odd. No, there's more to this place. I uh, well, I'd like to think that if it drops off like that, we probably don't have to worry about something coming in behind us uh, from that vector. Fair point. Uh, we need to go deeper. There's yeah. something. There's something here that we're missing. Unfortunately, I think you're correct. I will lead the front line then. Excellent. So, um, guess I'll join you. <laughs> yeah, so, Zavana, what have you been doing while this party sort of a, has been wondering? I noticed you were kind of hanging back in the bone yard. Well, just seeing if there are any more mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we gonna let Fairy all sneak up and and peek yeah. that corner. No, it looks like Herrick's already busting around that corner. No, oh, no, he I'll hasn't gone past down. it yet. He's good to go. Uh, so, Herrick, what is your uh, actual uh, dark vision? 60 feet, yeah? 300. 300? Yeah. Lies and slander, sir. 
Twilight Cleric. I say, the, the Drow's got 120. So uh... I, I've got 300. I promise you. Oh, all right, yeah, all right. yeah, yeah. That's that's actually a damn lot, Ryan. He's got a damn lot. Oh, all right, damn, 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 all right. <laughs> I didn't even think I allowed that much dark vision. All right, I have, I have all the dark vision. <laughs> oh, and I can I share it, so everyone gets. The, I think it's three hundred. I'll check. But I have sixty feet. I can share my three hundred right. with up to four willing creatures. Oh, what? That's insane. It lasts, That's it crazy. Lasts for an hour. Amazing. There's yeah. so much blood. Is that a channel divinity, or is that just something yeah. you can do? It's just eyes of the night. Okay. Um, I, I don't. Eyes of the night. Not eyes bad. Eyes of the night. There we go. Right. Posted it in chat. Okay. So, party of mine, as you come around the corner, you see this giant cauldron. Well, actually, Fariel and Herrick. Uh, you both spy this giant cauldron bubbling, and that is the absolute, without a doubt, source of the smell. And you see, sort of puttering about uh, near the cauldron, this old woman, and she's just, <clears throat> she's kind of digging through the pile of what looks like meat or bits, and she's. <clears throat> And she sort of walks back over to the and tosses it back into the pot. I think she can she see us? And so she seems to be she seems to be very focused on uh, what she's doing. <laughs> okay. Um, should should we just bust that ass or should we talk? Oh yeah. <laughs> You're uh, welcome to join me for dinner, if you like. What are we she having? Seems, she seems harmless. We should just go talk to her. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> hmm. I don't know if I want to eat, Sailor. Oh, this, this is cauldron stew. It's very good. Well... It's good in that it fills your belly. I find it needs a bit of uh, seasoning. <laughs> so I, uh, I do what I can to uh, up the disgusting. protein intake as a uh, the th th Thanks for the offer. I'm actually on a protein light diet uh, at the moment. Um, cause it, it helps keep the, the weight lighter and I could, you know, be, be spry. So uh, thank you. Ah. But no, thank you. Oh, well, well, very well then. <laughs> Suit yourself. Yes. Any okay. other takers? No, Our let's friend get the party started, Eric. shall we? Oh, gosh. Oh, I'm going to use inspiration. No, God, it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you also, as right. Eric said... Conversation's over. Yeah, boring conversation anyway. <laughs> 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 All right, so uh, with but that he's... let fly of guiding bolts. Oh, that was going to be uh, a sacred flame. Oh, it's going to be sacred flame. Yeah, sorry, I thought I'd check it. All right, I, I, let's say go ahead, go ahead and click your sacred flame. I'll, uh, I'll keep the thirteen and let us get into everyone's favorite. Well, <laughs> we done it now. Yeah. Oh, all right then. Guess we're uh, we're, we're done talking. There you go. <laughs> I, I, I've missed anyway, but I've missed any. Oh, it's well, nice. now it's you, DC. Maybe we can convince her that you didn't mean it. It's a yeah. DC oh. save. Sorry, it's a DC save. DC DC fourteen deck save or sacred flame. Yeah. Yes. All right. I thought it was right. a, a ranged attack. Natural one on initiative. <laughs> by the way, <laughs> oh, this oh, is good. terrifying. This is bad. <laughs> Uh, Fariel um, has got advantage on her. Uh, she, her uh, because all right, so let's see here. So I've got Flynn. I see Xander. Well done, Xander. Uh, I see the professor. <laughs> Dear God, professor. All right. Um, is that a this is gonna. This is gonna go well. This is this is fantastic. And Herrick with twelve and. <laughs> And, oh, oh well, hey, look at that! Y'all are uh, 
I'll say rolling a lot better. Oh, I gotta put. Uh, and then let me go ahead and roll Fairy Elf. She said she has advantage uh, on hers. Yeah, she does. Yeah. With them. Uh, I can post and with that, that, what that is. She, she comes in with a eleven, <laughs> an eleven with advantage. But hey, wow. you know, it, it hey, is yeah. what it is. Oh, there we go. Okay, so let's do this in descending order. Wham! All right. So did uh, did that did that radiant um, sacred flame hit? Yeah. Right. So uh, now that we've got all of all of that sorted out. Uh, the sacred flame. So as it sh- uh, streaks out across, and you, uh, it, woo. so it was a f- no. I have to DC DC, four, DC, DC deck fourteen save. deck save. DC fourteen deck save. Okay. It actually shows that in the roll twenty there. If you just lovely. lovely. Sh- ah, and so the hag rolls an eleven. No, oh, she takes six radiant. So she takes six radiant damage. And you hear her, Get them! Get, get them? Oh, shit, oh, that's more. Yeah, that's... I should have done Get them. Get them. <laughs> All right, then. So, ladies and gentlemen, top of the order, though actually, technically, Herrick, that wouldn't have... Well, uh, so... Uh, it was a surprise Anders. round, surprise a surprise round, round yeah. for him. Yeah. It wasn't very surprising. It wasn't that, very surprising. Like she, like she was standing there. But all right. that's true. But you let him do it before we rolled initiative, so it was oh, a no, surprise round. So, <laughs> you clearly <laughs> said that she wasn't paying attention to it. Uh, well, I was trying to have a lovely conversation. I would like to cast fireball. All right, but but oh, I don't yeah, have it yet. Yeah, I, I would like say. to cast fireball too, but uh, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I can't we all would like swarm. to cast fireball. I uh, I was just hoping Ryan to go. Okay, you cast it. Um, I think yeah. I am going to instead use fire bolt. Okay. Um, and so I will roll. Uh, Eleven. Oof. Eleven is not enough to hit. So. <laughs> So having been sh- uh, shot with the sacred flame, she uh, she, <laughs> she she learned the, the second time you threw a fire uh, a magic at her. So she's like, Aah! um, uh, that's that's all I'm gonna do for now. Can you move Tempest up so I can use her? Absolutely. Since you won't give me control of her. <laughs> um. Oh wait, who's next in the round? Silvana. Hey. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead as a. I'm gonna let Tempest take the help action against Maud Chiselbone. Okay. So that whoever <laughs> uh, has the next melee attack on her will have advantage. Oh, brilliant! Okay, so uh, so Tempest takes the, uh, the help action. So. Yep, and then back, down and back, up, and then back. So whoever attacks Maud next will do so at advantage. And I believe that's just a melee. Y- or is it? I, I will. I will look. I'll look right now on that. I think it does actually still count for for uh, ranged ranged attacks. For ranged as well. attacks, because to my mind, like uh, an attack is an attack. It does. Like, yeah, it does. So, yeah, uh, excellent. So, uh, z- speaking of which, Silvana. So, uh, uh, buddy, if you'd like to double check and just verify that. Um. So, like, okay, so we got mod. But like, we got is, there anything, is, is there anything else like around her that we? Like, there, uh, there is the cauldron and the pile of bones that you can see. All right. Um. I think I think I'm gonna cast fairy fire. Okay. Dig it. Where are you gonna put it? Um. We can around put that her. <laughs> around her. Okay. Uh, I don't. I don't know what the best thing to do is. <laughs> I need help. <laughs> hey. It's all. Hey. As with everything in D and D, try it, and uh, it might it's work. It's a cube, it's a, right? It's a twenty, yeah, twenty foot cube. Yeah, twenty, 20 foot, foot cube. So that'll if you put it on mod. So do you want it to start in mod square and go back, or sort of be in the space in between mod and you? Um, kind of like a 
Are you looking at this four foot square or this four foot square? Does that make sense? So these um, four, these four yeah. squares. Yeah. Or, I guess yeah. starting at mod and going back. Okay, starting at mod and going back. Let's go ahead and cast fairy fire. That. One second. Which uh, anything in there just needs to make a deck save, I believe. Yes. 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 Alrighty then. Yes, each object in the 20 foot cube within range is outlined in blue, green, or violet. Uh, any creature in the area uh, is outlined in light if it fails a dex saving throw. So. Uh, did it Did it do it? Yeah. Well, uh, I think you hit display in VTT I rather didn't. than. I didn't. I definitely hit the cast. cast. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, mod yeah. rolls. Oh, shit. The... Wait, I hit, I hit Feather Fall instead of yeah, that one. My bad. One second. Um, You're right. Yeah. But the, every time you hit cast, it uses your slots. So. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Sure you're not burning slots that you're not actually burning. That uh, was going to be my question. Object, yeah. the creature shed dim light in a 10 foot radius. So uh, everything in that square. Uh, so Maud gets lit up in her blue, green, and violet. She's like, what the hells? And so she's clearly not amused. She has to save. Though you realize with this fairy fire sort of coming around her, this this old woman facade starts to sort of melt a little bit. And you begin to see this creature begin to emerge as like her fingers elongate and have like talons on the end of them. And her mouth sort of distends a little bit and her teeth become sharper. She almost kind of looks like one of those deep sea fish. Ooh. And it's not a pretty sight. It's not pretty at all. All right, anything else, Silvana? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> nope, I am um, thoroughly grossed out. You've, and... got, you've got to roll deck saves. So. Uh, yes, uh, the creatures rolled their deck saves. Uh, Maud failed. Oh, can okay. Wait, can I like do like bardic inspiration or anything like that? Can I do that still or no? Absolutely. Uh, so fairy fire is your action and you can okay. go ahead and as a bonus action, uh, always give bardic inspiration. Okay. So I'm going to give bardic inspiration to, uh, you know, Flynn, cause he's next. <laughs> you can do, <laughs> yeah, it. do some stuff. You got this. <laughs> and because you are a bard of the school of valor, the college of valor, uh, Flynn, I believe you can add this to either an AC uh, for your AC for an attack made against you, or the damage roll for a attack that you make against another creature. Though I believe also in addition to that, you can use it just as you traditionally do with Bardic Inspiration, which is just do uh, the attack roll or uh, a skill roll. Uh, another thing for Madeline as well is that if you know that I need to heal someone, you can give me inspiration, and that adds to the healing. Okay. Oh, no kidding. Well, that's yeah, brilliant. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. All right. So with all those options available to you, Flynn the Dwarf Flinger, uh, <laughs> let's see you. Uh, let's see. How far am I away from this lady? Uh, do, do, do. Okay. Wow, this is a long way away. Um, yeah, remember, they are 10 foot squares, my friends. They are 10 foot squares. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, get up to here. Okay. And uh, take a shot with my crossbow. Okay. Uh, and that's going to be at advantage, right? That, it, that will be at advantage because of the help action. Yes. Yes, because the fairy fire is not a melee attack. You are correct. Uh, also, Ryan, you... add the six hit points back because it would have fell short. It looked like we were... It's only 60 foot. Oh, because you're saying Sacred Flame had only, because Sacred Flame only had like a 30 60, foot range on it, did 60 it? 60 foot range, but obviously, I, it, but it looked like we was in range, but obviously if they're... If they're... Yeah, I, I, Ryan, I don't know that the map is scaled. Uh, it, it may not matter right now, but the map isn't scaled correctly because if I count squares, yeah, I'm not 80 feet from her, I don't think. Let's see here, that's... 5, 10, 15, oh, yeah. 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. I'm a, at, at 40 I feet, I can attack her. I see. Okay. Okay. So the, so the ruler scale is 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 is, is not is doubling kind of what you guys are at. So I would have hit her then. So you would have hit yes. My aura is also like the so right now my aura is set to like a forty foot radius or something like that. Got it. All right. And so, so Flynn, with that twenty one to hit, 
that's a hit for sure. So go ahead and roll your damage. Nice. Like crossbow doing six piercing damage. And I'm going to follow that up with a sonic strike because um, I saw what this thing looked like and it scared me. So Yeah, no, that's, yeah, no, you, you smart. You can, <laughs> you can use your bardic inspiration for damage as well, can't you? I'm going to hold on to that because I don't want to get hit. <laughs> <laughs> right, remember the, that if you don't burn it, no one else can get one, so. Oh, for bardic? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Only one um, is available to be used at a time. All right, so with the psionic strike, you add four to that hit. Putting it at ten. Anything else to add to that damage? Mm, nope, that's all I got. All right, all right. So you see your crossbow, so, so the, the bolt goes, as it flies across the room, it seems to hit the hag, and as it hits the hag, it then seems to drive through as um, if something behind it like was pushing that, it that further was a through. Four was it a hit? That was a D twenty. Oh wait, hold on. I for, like I forgot it. the. Uh... Ah. Okay, so it's only two. Oh, uh, uh, well. <laughs> All right, so. Uh... I think you, you rolled a D twenty for extra damage. That's awesome. Well, I clicked. <laughs> <laughs> So, with only an eight of damage uh, total, but still, I want to say every little hit counts. Absolutely. And up, so then, Flynn, anything further from you? Uh, no. Or will you take your bonus action to reload your crossbow? Uh, you don't need to. I was going to say, do I need to? Because that's not a thing. No. That's only on heavy crossbows, I think. Yeah, doesn't but light like, crossbow. Doesn't light, light crossbow have loading? No. All right, then. Go to, go to. All right. Uh, Herrick, I believe you're up. Okay, uh, he holds his symbol as his uh, father and uh, aid me, and a, an aura emanates from him, and I put a twilight sanctuary up around me. Nice. Okay, so twilight sanctuary. So use your channel divinity. Okay. And so as a 30-foot radius is filled with yeah. dim light, it moves with you and lasts for one minute until you are incapacitated or die. And whenever a creature ends its turn there, you grant one of the following benefits. Yep. 1d6. Uh, plus looks like a temporary hit points of 1d6. Plus four. Plus your cleric level. Oh, cleric level, is it? Yeah, 1d6 plus three. Nice. Now, do you do you roll that now and then sort of everyone gets that? At, or yeah, do you roll yeah. it? As... I, I roll it now and um, what's, uh, what's the radius? 30, oh, like 30, 30 foot radius. 30 foot, I move up to, to here. Brilliant. All right. Um, love that. And yeah, everyone gets it, including me. I think I do as well. All right. Roll that D6, and then we'll add your cleric. So level. Ev everyone can click on that. Ah. And because everyone has to roll it to set themselves. Get it. Okay. And that's every round, you get you, they get refreshed every round. Okay. Um, so as as long as they are within yeah. 30 feet of you. They get that extra. So I get four uh, temporary. The extra eleven. Ooh, love it. So uh, Fariel is going to go ahead and use her bonus action to hide along this wall. So so remember, she can get, Fer Fariel should also roll. Should roll for her temporary hit points. Yeah, that's everyone. That's oh one, yes, thank you. One d six plus three. So remember, you had the plus three on that because that Ooh. doesn't do it. So Fariel has oh four plus seven. three, so seven. Yeah. Temp hit points, nice. That's a that is a wonderful Twilight Realm. Awesome ability. Yes. That's nuts. So really, all right. So uh, Fariel is going to go ahead and stealth to hide. She puts her at a twenty-three. All right, then let's uh let's say some something tells me gets advantage anyway she yeah no no i say yeah no with with no bonus uh there absolutely is no way she can beat the 23 so she, she is she would get advantage anyway she, she can probably shoot and then hide because it's got yeah. um tw uh, what has it got on it all right so she's gonna go ahead and get dust whatever vantage mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And since she has since she has advantage does she get the sneak yes oh absolutely 
Yes, with a 22, she goes ahead and gets that damage. So her, she does, oh, nice. Oh, eight hit. piercing and eight sneak for a total of 16 so damage. She, so she nice. can probably hide now. Because... Because she's got a fairy fire on her. So she would get an advantage anyway. That's right. Fairy fire grants that uh, that's advantage to everybody. Yeah. Love it. Okay, so now we should go ahead and duck and hide. Okay, lovely. So then we'll keep that earlier uh, 23 stealth that she rolled. And do, go ahead and take that 16, beautiful, out of Mad Maggie. Who? Lovely. Oof. All right, Mad Maggie. You, you mean Maud? Maud, sorry, Maud Chiselbone. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm yeah. reading my uh, <laughs> worlds here, friend. Uh, so. I'm going to see Sean <laughs> pop on in a minute and start DMing as well. Yeah, right. <laughs> So with that, we have from the ether. What do you mean from the ether? You okay? No, we're not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, don't like, I don't like the ether. All right. Excellent. So then from. Sorry. Sorry, friends. Oh, brilliant. Okay. So, fly. And appearing in front of Herrick is this ball of light. And it is going to go ahead and attempt to shock him. Eric, does a 23 hit you? No. No? No? <laughs> All right, then. All right, then. Uh, that 23 does 15 points of damage. Wow. Uh, as you feel lightning arc out uh, across and just <laughs> across your body. Uh, oh. is, your, is your sanctuary a concentration spell? But oh, my, right well, my, uh, my shield of faith is. You what? My shield of faith is. Excellent. All right. All right. Oof. All right. And with that eight, that is going to go ahead and drop <clears throat> your shield of faith. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, and so with that, uh, the creature stands in front of you, crackling. Uh, as a little tiny ball of energy. And then it is Maud's turn. Maud is going to come forward. You really started to piss me off. And as she moves up to there, she's going to go ahead and take a look at Flynn. Right. Yeah, right? So, <laughs> and what she does is she locks her eyes with you, and I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Ooh, that's scary. You've got inspiration, remember? You do. Ah, okay, cool. Then hey, let's see how this goes. Don't suck. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! 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 yeah. yeah. Didn't suck. yeah. <laughs> crit, crit save. Nice. With I look a back at her. glorious <laughs> green glowing 23, Flynn, like, averts his gaze a la Indiana Jones. Um... And it's just like and doesn't and doesn't take the effect of the glare. Uh, however, uh, anyone within thirty feet of her, I need all of you to make uh, another uh, wisdom uh, saving throw. This is going to be uh, looks like Fariel, Flynn, uh, Herrick, uh, Tempest. <laughs> <laughs> so that looks like uh, Fariel, Flynn, and Herrick. I need a wisdom saving throw. Wait, within another? how within how many feet of her? 30 feet. I'm within 30 feet of her. Truth, truth. And so is Wait, this Havana? 5, 10, 10. No, 15, you're not. 20, 25. Th oh, oh, yes. So it looks like both Xander and the professor are just in the outside. Of oh, yeah. Wait. Am I? Yeah. Wait, no, 30 feet of the hat. Okay. No, you're yeah. right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Zavana, like Zavana, Zavana is, is safe. Only, yeah, Zavana is yeah. the only one who's outside of that range. So I need. Uh huh. Everyone, <laughs> that's the party spirit. Wis uh, wisdom save. I'm rolling wisdom it again, bro. <laughs> God damn. Yeah, Flynn, another one. 
Herrick, you save. Xander saves. No, I didn't decide. Uh, I got a 15. Flynn, Flynn, second wisdom save fails. That's okay. You made the one you should have. Uh, <laughs> Professor, you save. Xander. Save. That's 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 Tempest. Oh, My, oh. Z- Xander is the 12, and then All Tempest right. is 19. Oh, and then, I'm so sorry. Here I am, chit chat, and I, I need Fairy Elm to make one. Uh, wisdom save. Is it against charm spells or anything? Oh, God, I thought that was going to be a two. 14. Okay, yeah, right. I saw that too, and I was like, no. All right, so Flynn, as uh, so she she locks eyes with you, and you manage to shrug off the glare, and she goes, ah. And so you kind of like have this moment of like, ah. <laughs> in that like classic horror movie trope of like your eyes go wide and your hair kind of streaks white a little bit. Like, you are frightened for Damn. one minute. You can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of your turns with disadvantage if the hag is within line of sight. Gotcha. So for frightened, this means, for those of you playing along at home, a frightened creature has disability on ability checks and uh, attack rolls when the source of fear is within line of sight, and it can't willingly move closer to the source of its fear. Yeah. She was able to do that twice in the same round? No. The first one was an action. The third one was just uh, an aura. Good thing is, Flynn, is that at the end of your round, you you can remove that frightened. Absolutely, and with that, we go to my aura. Other than the professor. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, my aura removes frightened and charmed. Oh, it does. Yep. But at the end of uh, your it, turn. you, it said something like you choose the effect on that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And one effect cause. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. So you can either choose hit points, remove charmed, or remove frightened. That's a. Is that when we end? Whenever we end our turn. Whenever yeah. we end its turn. Yeah. It Whenever sphere, creature, yeah. including ends its turn in the sphere, you can grant that creature one of these benefits. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So if you end your turn in the sphere now, since he's Flynn he's for this turn took points. the temp hits. Yeah. Which this turn is about to be over. Next turn he would be able to get. Uh, uh, the frightened removed, which is good. Yeah. So, Professor. Okay. What is my range here? Thirty feet to her, twenty-five mm-hmm. to the to yes. the other to the willow wisp. Uh, you know what? Turnabout is fair play. So I'm going to cast cause fear on. The hag. Interesting. All right. <clears throat> go to, go to. Uh, and <laughs> since I'm at second level, I can also target the Will of the Wisp. So right. I need wisdom saves from them both. Okay. Okay. So let me take a hot second here. So, uh. Oh, okay. Fair, f- fair enough. Fair enough. Um, all right. So, uh, the will wisp will make her... I oh, get. actually, it, it does say constructs and undead are immune to this effect. So if a will o wisp is undead, then it is immune. So Why? Then it uh, it appears to have... Well, no if effect. the hag is also undead, then this spell did nothing. So... <laughs> <laughs> well, so... Uh, what was that, what was that DC? It's a DC 13. Wisdom. DC 13. So as you... <laughs> wow. So as you pop this one off, both of them kind of go... <laughs> and the will o wisp. Is it so they both just kind of mock him. Pretty sure will o wisp can't speak. He is. You know what? They can. They just choose not to. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't tell him what he can and can't do. <laughs> hmm. All right. Um. Man, I don't like being so bunched up here. So I'm going to just move like off it. to the side a little bit. And that's the end of my turn here. All right. All right. Good. So, you, get, so you the get, professor pops off this fear attack and the, the creatures seem to shrug it off. Yeah. It's all right. And we're back to top of the order. Um. All right. Well, I guess I'm kind of done with this bitch as well. Uh, so I'm gonna. Oh, we gotta select the correct tool. I'm gonna come down here and 
I am going to cast on the spell page. Uh, I'm going to cast Aganazar's Scorcher. Ooh. What is, that sounds cool. I'm going to say Xander's um, popping out his new toys. How do I pop that into the chat over there? Click cast. I'm going to say if you click, yeah, you cast it, it should populate it into the into the stream. Yeah, it didn't. Oh, it so it's a DC 13 deck save. DC 13 um, deck save, and then yeah, it's a it's a five foot wide, thirty foot long line of fire. Okay, that so emanates from me. Are you? I'm targeting Maud. Targeting Maud, lovely. All right, so uh, Maud will. <laughs> say, let me actually make sure I'm clicking Maud here. Maud will make a deck. Well, Maud will attempt a deck save. She uh, makes the deck save with an 18. Then she still takes half. Excellent. So half that damage is 15. Okay, so that'll be... Whew. That's, that's six crispy that's fire damage. Seven. Uh, that's going to be seven. Seven? All right. Seven and a half if we're... <laughs> if we're trifling. Half, I, want, yeah. I want her to take that half. Um, <laughs> it's not marked down on the sheet, but she you like she looks up like 0. 0.5 extra. <laughs> All right. Uh Jesus Christ. Um Yeah, and I guess I guess I'm gonna hang. Okay. Great. I don't, I don't know that I want to, but I'm gonna hang. Uh and so since I'm ending my turn. I re-roll on the D6 yes, for temporary hit points. Yes, the jerk inside uh, orb. And so that, whatever this is, will replace my old ones. Mm-hmm. Yes. Correct. <clears throat> Great. So I went from eight to four. I don't think it has to. I think you can choose. Oh, I, can I, if I can keep my old ones, then I'll keep my old ones. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, this... So- it's intriguing. And then if so, is it that they get to select which which benefit you grant, uh, Lee, or for the You're this turn? Lee. Yeah, they select. Every player in that they area select. selects, yeah. So okay. okay. Obviously, so he, if he's got a higher right. temp already, they, they keep that. So okay. Like, We're going to need it. <laughs> yeah, I need it. Yeah, right. since, since apparently they can save against everything that we throw. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, except all this fire damage that you've it's starting to smell like burnt old woman. It's like Betty White toast right now. Aww, gross. All right. So, <laughs> speaking of which, Zalvana, you're up. <laughs> I start my morning ride with some Betty White toast. Gross. <laughs> quick, uh, quick point of order, Xander. That yet, yeah, when you gain, you when you get more temporary hit points, you decide whether to keep you have the ones you have or gain new ones. Excellent. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, um. I'm, since I'm so far back, I'm just going to like move up just a, a schmidge. Oh, yeah. No, that's, it's that's just, it's just a little that's bit. Pretty smart. Um, that way, because I, I still can't, I yeah. forget how to do the whole arrow thing to see how far you oh, That's right. You are about. You the are arrow five. thing is not working at the moment anyway. Yeah. So, you're not trusting uh-huh. his lies. Well, I also want to cast Vicious Mockery. Oh, brilliant. All right. Because, you know, why not? I'm going to say, you look like the armpit of an unshaven bog hag. Oh, <laughs> I'm just oh, kidding. Oh, <laughs> Harry goes burned. <laughs> he said, you look like an armpit. <laughs> <laughs> and it does nothing. <laughs> and she goes, like this? <laughs> Some of my best friends are bog hags. Um, all right. So, I thought you were gonna say some of my best friends are armpits. Oh my god! I did too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So not all, so she crits on this wisdom save with a twenty-one. Oh my god! And so oh she's god. like, "Oh yes, Ooh, paint off. me like one of your French girls." <laughs> Ew. <laughs> all right. So, uh, Silvana, anything else you want to traumatize us with? <laughs> I'm picturing that scene from The Shining at this point. Uh, like, uh. Uh. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Bonus action. Um, I don't know. Can I uh, like? Flynn, did you burn the ex- your? No, I, I haven't burned it yet. All right. So you say so you, you, you can give out other inspiration I'll just yet, Zavanna, until yeah. Flynn burns. Is that true? I can't. 
Can I, can I like throw something at her? <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> Like, like my dagger or something? Absolutely. No, absolutely. Well, okay. so technically uh, you could, however, you vicious mockeried, which is an action. So that oh, is your okay. action. I believe all you have left now is a bonus action. Um, oh, which... bonus actions right there. I was looking at the wrong thing. My bad. No worries. No worries. Yeah, yeah no, I, I got I got nothing. So I'm done. <laughs> I thought you could only give out one inspiration at a time, uh, but feel free to correct me on that, oh, oh I, people of the webs. I think it's so, I think it's good. Well, I only have one more bardic inspiration left before a long rest. <laughs> well, there okay. it is. All right. So with, with that, Flynn, uh, we need we need Z in the chat tonight to clarify <laughs> all of our rules for us. Yeah. All right. So I'm I have fear on me now. Do I have to move away or? Well, so uh, okay. Cause but you don't have fear on you. You're frightened. You are frightened. Oh, frightened. Okay. So which means you cannot move closer and any attacks you make are going to be at disadvantage while the creature is within sight and the hag is out of fairy fire right now right uh no, she stays i know she is fairy fired so does that mean i just I, they canceled out and i just i believe so i believe you just make attack yeah at, at, normal. at normal yeah okay oh, and i can't move closer that's fine it's gonna do the crossbow again no, no, shoot her right. <laughs> shoot her in the armpit shoot him <laughs> oh the 11 it's will inspiration, not be Inspiration, inspiration. Like I do have an inspiration! Good. Here we go! <laughs> Add your... Eh. And with a three, it is a contest. Okay. So, roll your d20. I'll roll my d20, see if my armpits save me. All right, so... Oh, good lord. She rolls a... a oh, my oh, god! Yeah. Well my one! So, with the hands <laughs> roll of 11, Flynn comes out on top with a 12, so that, that bolt mines to find just a, a place to call home as it sinks in. Uh, for uh, eight. eight points of damage. Eight points of damage. Well done, Flynn. And uh, with that, she... she ah! <laughs> Ooh, enough! Enough! No, wow. no, you're still talking. It's not enough. Um... <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, what's her what's her range of uh, of her fear or of her frightened ability? Uh, she's uh, it's creatures within thirty feet of her. And so I, uh, once once you have made the save, uh, you are good for a while. Okay. And, and he will lose frightened at the end of this turn because of Herrick's aura. Correct. Uh, yes. If, yeah. Yes. If he chooses it. If he chooses that. Oh, yeah, he, he chooses that. Does he have she to roll in... against again now for the frightened or no? That's uh, yeah, that's fine. my question. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I so yeah, you, you would have to. You can roll at the end uh, with it says with disadvantage if the hag was, is, is within line of sight. So you could roll, and then well, he has to make the roll to save no matter what. If he right. fails it, it will end this turn, and he'll have to save again next turn. But right, disadvantage right. for the save though. Yeah, that's okay. It doesn't cost anything. He's still going to be with done with it for the rest yeah. of this round because mm -hmm. of your aura. My aura, yeah, if he chooses it, yeah. He has to choose yeah. It. yeah. So I would roll a save with disadvantage if it were me. Okay, now I'm going to do that then. Wisdom save? Yes, wisdom save. At disadvantage, press control. At disad. At disage. Vantage. Oh, so we, we can actually yeah, cast can. multiple bardic inspirations, just FYI. Excellent. Yeah, that's what, it's just that's what, one person can have two. Yeah. Oh, that's correct. excellent. Thank All right, you. then. So, unfortunately, Flynn, with a crit fail mm -hmm. on that fright and save, you 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 you, you, you still ski. Okay. Until you until end. right this second when yeah. you end it. You sit there and go, <laughs> oh, my God, what am I doing? No, <laughs> and then no, no, you, but, Flynn, anything further from you? No. All right, then. Well, keep your chin up. You so, got this. So do you end it? And you know <laughs> do you end the frightened? I do end the frightened. <laughs> mm. <Yay! laughs> we got there. I'm also, confused. <laughs> so not to, well, um, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about this uh, offline, but all right. So then, yeah. Eric, go to, go to. Okay. Move on. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. Um, Harrick will obviously he's hurting bad as I just took a nasty hit 
He will. Da, da, da. Where's my spells? He will speak the words. Um, a Thargan does a Huna. Nice. And he heals himself for 12. Jesus Christ, 12. That's a level very 1. Very nice. Max hey. That is a very, very nice cure wound. So again, you see the... Yeah, it's Max uh, Max Cure. Max Cure. Where the, where the, where the crackling <laughs> scorches and like sort of the veins had spidered along him where the lightning struck him. That yeah. seems to recede back as if he's as knit anew. As if by magic. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then Herrick, uh, anything further? Um, I'm going to get up in her face. Oh. Oh, all right. And well, all right. And just get up in her face. Yeah, because I, I can't cast. I always got to cast. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So he just moves in real close. He's gonna show her his armpit. You like? Ah, yeah. look at this. Look at oh, these man. armpits, freshly shaved <laughs> this morning. Uh, got a couple of pit fighters. All right. Uh, I give so temporary <laughs> hit points of seven. <laughs> All right, so uh, Fariel is going to go ahead since she's since she's got advantage because Herrick is she's got advantage anyway. Well, she got advantage because of fairy fire. Oh, all right, so much advantage. She's got <laughs> uber advantage. All, all the, advantage. the advantage. Yes. But she takes advantage. No. And she scores a twenty-two <laughs> on that shot, so that will take. Holy oh, cow! Wow. wow. Buzzing. Ladies and, gent ladies and gentlemen, that is why you bring a rogue to the party with 20 points of damage. Holy Jeez. crap. Oof. And with that, so as as Herrick kind of gets up in her face, she's all, ah, ah, and he's all, ah, ah, and then, <laughs> sure enough, like out of, out of nowhere comes the shot, and it's just, ah, <laughs> She just oh, that was rocks. her. <laughs> nice. Yeah, she she falls on go. Boom. That's two weeks in a row. Ryan has killed his own monster <laughs> <laughs> with with the elk character. I get like that. Sam, Sam, Samus didn't catch exactly what she was like. Can you do that again? Oh yeah. So you had you had Herrick going up, going, <laughs> and, she was, <laughs> and then they were. Like, <laughs> Perfect. Just like that. Yeah. And <laughs> you call that an armpit? This is an armpit. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'll tell you, this fight is the pits. All right. Oh. So, uh, and since <laughs> Buddy won't believe it until it's real, uh, go ahead and put the red, the red hexy on this one. Yeah. Hex her out. <laughs> yeah. She, she, she's oh move, see, she's moving. That I, she ain't yeah, going right. to hit her again. She's just twitching. She's twitching. You fine. You fine. You fine. Not dead yet. Fresh wind. There she goes. All right. There you go. All right. So uh, that pops off, and the willow wisp is going to go ahead. And what are you going to do, little willow wisp? I don't know. Um, <laughs> it is going to take its. Um, it's going to take its uh, action to disengage from Herrick, and it'll fly away. So it'll retreat into the darkness. Yeah, I can see it's you. What I thought. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, because doesn't it produce light? It's like I'm hiding over here. <laughs> well, so, they can go in. They can go invisible, can they? Absolutely, yeah, yeah, they yeah, can. They, yeah, they can. I just thought it'd be funny if he's running away but showing us where he's going. Yeah, right. <laughs> little, like Navi over there being like, follow that beacon. <laughs> and with that, friends, uh, poor, poor old dead Maud Chiselbone drops the floor. As you see in all her grotesque gory, uh, the uh, the form of a sea hag. So you all aren't uh, aren't much of talkers, are you? <laughs> no, we, I, oh, Herrick, I. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did you want to say hello to the hag and have dinner with her? I well, one of those. I didn't want to have dinner. I didn't want to say hi. I did say hi. I, I did <laughs> have quite. I did have questions. I, I'm gonna real easy take a peek into the pot. Can I tip it over? 
Okay, so uh, Xander, as uh, as Xander saunters up, you absolutely can tip it over. Uh, it's 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 gonna take a little bit of hoof because it's a Don't. it's a fairly large pot spada. There's gonna be guts everywhere. I yeah. want to see if I can pick through Maud's pockets. Ooh, has it gotten its pockets? Yeah, All right, so. Got- any magical trinkets or anything like that. All right, so uh, one at a time. Let's start with uh, Xander, since he was the first to declare action. Uh, Xander, you move over to the cauldron, and it looks like this piping hot stew is uh, has got little bits of skinned meat and what appear to be fresh human organs in its late- latest batch. You see the sort of lumps of the flesh sort of bobbing up and down in what smells like a a really delicious spicy broth um but it's also pretty horrendous to sort of think about just how much your stomach is growling i mean i i just realized that this pile of stuff over here is a pile of bodies oh yeah it's a pile of corpses I, I, I thought it was like seaweed and stuff like that. And then I just, I looked and zoomed in. I was like, no, nope, yeah. No, during, no during the fight, I zoomed in and like got real close. I'm like, oh no, that's, that's clearly a pile of bodies. <laughs> this is a Soylent Green stew, guys. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Soylent Green. They're mm. eating people. Uh, and then, so Flynn, if you want to attempt to uh, give me a, a little, so do, uh, if you do, a, if you give me a running start for that, I will go ahead and give you advantage on well, this. I'm- Strength check. I'm definitely going to run to start then. <laughs> um. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, and I, I will say 15. To the professor. That was a save, looks like. Oh. That's a save, well, probably. That's a. Uh... Oh, no, it's probably not. Oh, yeah, no, my save is better than my bad thing. Okay, try this again. All right, now here we go. Strength check. Is it? That's twelve. Well, so you kind of like get to it. You like. <laughs> like you start huffing and puffing a little bit, and it's like it starts to start to pick up. A, like you can feel it sort of pick up a little bit, and then like your arms kind of lock on you, and you're like, oh, oh no! And then you're in that moment where you either need to have somebody help you out, or it, you're, or you're just going to be like stuck in this moment. Does he burn himself <laughs> on the pot? So he's a. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh. God. Once the professor goes, I have another question. <laughs> um, I, love how oh, yeah. has to his aid. I have a strength of eight. Uh, I say I to mean, the professor. I could go help. I, just I am was... totally distracted and not oh, not focused on what he's doing at all. <laughs> why are we dumping this again? Why? It's people. That's why. Then... <laughs> Fine, I'll come help. <laughs> because it's people. <laughs> come on, guys. <laughs> All right, all right. Um, I'll, I'll say, uh, good luck, Salvara. Yeah, may, right. May the old father uh, so, be with you, and I offer a guidance. Do I need to do a strength? Blah, 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 you get one d four on your check. I'm sorry. Are you are you trying to get a one d four for Flynn? No. I yeah. Do I to Silvana. help him or something? Or? I, she needs to do a strength check to yeah. help, and then she has guidance. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. do a strength check to help. I don't know what that means. <laughs> oh, go ahead and click uh, on your character sheet okay. uh, on the, on your strength. Uh, so it'll go the ahead. The one and at the top? Up. Yep. Yep. Okay. You're correct. She's doing it. Damn, you have a plus three? Okay, so with that 14, you come and, up. And she has guidance, so she can add one D4 if she needs Oh, well, three. then go ahead and roll that D4. Just regular D4? Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. one old, well, good old-fashioned D4. Seven. Yeah. Nice. Okay, and so with that, you're able to just come up, and you like grip the edge of it, and you just kind of help him sort of get it up and over. So as it sort of sputters, I imagine you guys are pushing it towards the north? She came to the north side. Oh, so. I don't know where I am. <laughs> <laughs> Here. And you actually uh, and Flynn so never actually came over. So. Oh yeah, no, I gotta I gotta move me to where. To All where right, I'm so yeah, I so wherever 
wherever Flynn goes, she might be tipping it back at him. All right, okay, good. So the so it'll it'll kind of gush out uh, over over yonder this way as it sort of pours out. Um, and then, uh, Professor, go ahead and yeah, uh, make an investigation. Yes. <laughs> I love those. Dirty 20. Dirty, a dirty 20. Lovely. Okay. So with a dirty 20, she doesn't have a whole lot on her, you know, as, as befitting. I mean, she's got bits and bobs and sort of random trinkets. Um, Go ahead and roll me a D12. Yeah. Mm. Armpit mushrooms incoming. Oh, here it comes. Eight. Uh, with an eight, you actually find, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, you, you find a, a necklace of teeth. Okay. Good. Which actually contain, uh, about eight gold, uh, on them. The, the teeth themselves being gold teeth. Okay. All of the teeth are gold? Uh, so all, yeah, the, all of the teeth that are on this necklace are uh, various and sundry gold teeth. So they're about eight gold pieces. Okay. Cool. <laughs> all right. Uh, uh, all right, friends. Can I, so I, I so here's my, you... I'm sorry, here's my, here's my two part thing. I want to bring uh, Tempest up here just to kind of look. Excellent. And then Ryan, this, this thing, it was, it was, we, we had smells from it. It seems like it was a bubbling hot stew. Was it on a fire? So that's the thing is it wasn't, but it was a hot, like it was a warm stew. Um, can you open the vision up here? Okay. Uh, do we, do you guys think we have 10 minutes? Because I'll do, I'll cast detect magic as a ritual and th there's no fire, but this thing is hot or the stew was hot. Uh, so. If, if we'd like to take the time, I also can detect poison and disease if that would be beneficial for anything. With as much decaying crap as we've been around for the last few minutes, <laughs> it's probably not a bad idea. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. Yeah. Uh, does Tempest seem like it's, it's kind of okay? Uh, yeah, yeah. That? Uh, Tempest kind of uh, finds another pile of sort of corpses and charnel and whatnot. So it's uh, another delightful uh, bit of smell on that way. But uh, in terms of danger, there doesn't seem to be anything that she can perceive. Okay. Then uh, if will... you want to, if you want to do that, I'll like post up here to like watch this entry or this path. Um, I just want to have sure make sure like nothing's gonna creep up on us while you're doing what you got to do. I hadn't even thought about that. What's to the south? Oh, so uh, let's say well, 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 oh. well reason. <laughs> oh, oh, well. Well, no reason, Flynn the fire, but uh, Flynn, like, sort of, I just want to check, make sure this wall. He had, he had to pee. Uh, all right, well, I will sit down and begin to ritual cast Detect Magic. Uh, yeah, Excellent. Uh, Excellent. Uh, I will sit down and also ritual cast Detect Poison and Disease. Excellent. Okay, okay. So I'm going to step uh, away from the people. Does that, yeah, step away, kind of like. Mm. From the dead sailor potpourri. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ooh. Well, so while it smells fantastic, like you like very clearly see like eyeball kind of floating by and whatnot, it's yeah. not great. It's not great, but it smells great, but it's not great. All right. So does anyone else have anything they, anything they want to do in the next 10 minutes? No. no. Because the skeleton comes back. No. Oh, okay. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Boop. Trying to look for obviously my twilight sanctuary ends after a minute, but I'm trying to look if the the temporary hit points go. All right, so the ten I'll, minutes pass. I'll just, I'll just hang on to my temporaries. That's cool. Yeah, I, I mean, I, <laughs> uh, and you discover that Ooh. this is the cauldron of plenty. 
This cauldron is made from a thick copper that has turned green with age. It's about four feet wide and has a mouth of about three and a half feet in diameter and weighs 50 pounds. This thing is, is a big old kettle. Uh, and hold up with 30 gallons of liquid. Embossed on its bulging sides are images of satyrs and nymphs in repose holding ladles. The cauldron comes with a lid and has uh, side handles. It sits on five little clawed feet that can keep it from tipping. See, see that? That's why you couldn't tip it. Glenn. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't your fault. It was the cauldron. Yeah, no, totally, totally. Uh, if water is poured into the cauldron and stirred for one minute, it transforms into a hearty, hot stew, which can provide one nourishing meal for up to four people per gallon. The stew remains Ooh, wow. hot while in the cauldron, then cools naturally after it is removed. Outside of the cauldron remains safe to touch despite the heat of the stew. And the cauldron can create stew three times. It then ceases to function until the next dawn when it regains all of its uses. Hmm. That's awesome. So Harrick is basically exempt now from the cook. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, I mean, yeah, if, if they... you want to eat out of a cauldron that was full of dead people at one point, well, yeah, we we can scrub it. Um, I mean, yeah. yeah, you get a hose and sort of like just. Sh- sh- but uh, I mean the 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 people of of East Haven are are hungry. Yeah, people of East Haven, Rinch, and Andrew, all of the ten towns Gary really. But <laughs> like I, I all of ten towns. I, I don't Everybody really want to tote hungry. this all the way around Icewind Dale, but I mean. Maybe we'd give this to Indra and let her, you know, compensate us for it, but yeah. let her feed the people, especially since their speaker is on ice. Yeah. yeah. Um, any uh, any pings off of the um, the silken cord amulet that I got earlier or the the thing that uh, Zalvana got earlier? Uh, no, the silken cord amulet uh, appears to be. Ju- uh, go ahead and Did- make me a religion check if you'd like. Okay. So you, there's no magical properties that you can pop off of it. That's fine. Uh, and then, so uh, with your detect poison and disease, there is no poison or disease detected. Though, no. oh, nice. Sander with a 17 for religion. So uh, having spent enough time in the Dales for the past few years, you notice that you've seen people wearing that uh, snowflake symbol. Uh, and it, you know it to be the uh, medallion of one who follows the frost maiden. There are several in Icewind Dale who believe that this rhyme is a, a sort of a, a proving, a testing of the people of the North and that the, only the strong will eventually survive this rhyme. And that's why the Frost Maiden is doing this to show who, are, who is her true followers. And so there are those in the Dale who sort of welcome this survivalist hell that everyone's sort of stuck in. All right. Well, I'm going to tuck that away to make sure no one sees it for now. Mm. Excellent. Um but no, nothing else in this area, like the pile of bodies or anything? No pings off anything else? No, 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 no nothing else seems to be pinging. Okay. The the mushrooms that we got earlier were definitely not poisoned? Correct. I'm going to say, yeah, with your detect poison and disease, uh, you... Let's see here. Yeah, no, so you don't sense any poison or, or poisonous creatures or diseases. Well, okay, I would say uh, some of the corpses have, like... A little bit like gangrene and stuff like setting in, so they're like, yeah. these, like he's so like the the bo- the the bodies are sort of hanging a little bit, especially the ones near the bottom, but um, nothing from the items that you've picked up so far. Okay, anybody, anybody over there get that COVID? Oh, except you remember those onyx darts? Yeah, that, you know, I've you, got those. Mm-hmm. So you feel a little bit of like a. Like it's faint. It's very, very faint. Okay. But it, you definitely sense something about them. Are they poisonous? If I pull one out, do that? Does it? Uh, do I get a poison ping to it? Uh, it it's again. Oh, I can I can identify the poison if it is. Mm, so, uh, it is not necessarily uh, a type of poison in what you would think would be a, a traditional sense, but you imagine that the, the stone itself has some sort of property to it that is not, that, that would make those who wield them unwell. Mm. Okay. So it, it affects the wielder, almost, not the target? Is that what you're saying? I'm saying the, the the stone itself seems to be emanating this 
uh, for lack of a better term, toxin. Okay. I mean, I would think that if you stuck it in someone and they left it, they might. <laughs> yeah. That's I mean, yeah. honestly, they, they might yeah. suffer from it as well. Yeah. yeah, 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 I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. Like, wow. Well, while the stone itself seems to have this faint sort of eman- like emanating pul- or like pulse or, or vibe coming off of it from your detect disease and poison spell, uh, you would imagine getting stuck with this thing wouldn't improve that sensation. Yes. Uh, cool. All right. Well, should we, should we mosey up? Um, or I mean, do you want to, do you want to take our five here, Ryan, or do we, is there a better stopping point? I think, uh, yeah, with, with eight 47 on the clock, friends, we'll go ahead and take our five and then, uh, that'll get us back to, unless we wish to do anything traveling, that'll get us back to the town of East Haven. Uh, Well, are we, are we done in here? Uh, uh, unless you wish to explore further. Are there more things for us to explore? There are always more things for you to explore. I'm always up for exploring. Well, <laughs> um, <laughs> what is like? well the, the hag is dead, and we have this nifty cauldron. Yeah, I'm now, yeah, that is, so with exploring, <laughs> keep in mind, you're also, I presume, dragging a 50-pound cauldron around with you with a group of you that is not necessarily... None of y'all picked a strength build, all right? So, I, I'd, I'd like to cast Tensor's Floating Disc. However, Harik is... <laughs> yeah, the same way you'd like to cast Fireball? Harik yeah. Har- is extremely strong. He can yeah, carry 50 That's true, pounds that's easy. true. Nirvana and Harik are like our beefiest members here. That's true. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I've got nothing to help with that. What's your charisma? I could mind sliver the cauldron. Madeline? That'll yeah. Sh- <laughs> Wait, what's my what now? I what's could your, make the charisma? cauldron very frightened. <laughs> could you? Charisma. What's your charisma? Charisma. charisma? Apparently not. All right. Uh, so, friends, we'll take plus four? five okay. minutes for the time being. And when we come back, we'll see if they get out of these cauldron caves alive. Right. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. Don't go anywhere. See you in a bit. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. Greetings, adventurers all. I am the Friendly Neighborhood Dungeon Master, otherwise known as the FNDM, and this is Cold Hard Witch, part two of session six. So, friends, they just went ahead and killed an old lady, beat (laughs) up an elderly bone giant, and uh, kicked the crap out of a small glowing orb. Yes, our party of adventurers have defeated a sea hag, a will-o'-wisp, and a frost giant. We didn't touch that will-o'-wisp. You made it run away. I mean, we, yeah, that we coward showed, ran. We showed it who was in charge. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the bar. The bar Joining us Lana. for the game today is, of course, we have Xander, our blade singer, Herrick, the cleric, played by Lee. Nathan's doing the professor, our warlock. Amy, very hell, the drogue, is currently not playing tonight, uh, is being proxied. Uh, Madeline, Zilvana, is our bard. Uh, and of course, Rodney playing Flynn, the sci fighter. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the dwarfs. That's, that's, that's hashtag. Right. <laughs> sci fighter. Love it. Sci fighter. All right. Um, so, but before we make a decision on if we're going further or turning around and going home, uh, did you say, Ryan, at some point we found what we think are the fishermen that we were sent after? Yes. I was just, I was just going to see if they had like a, a clan necklace or something that we could take back to show that any identifying yeah features. so uh, uh, unfortunately uh, unlike dwarves uh, these these common humans uh, didn't have any sort of uh, clan oh I'm sorry I I Idiots. guess I didn't I realize humans. they were humans I, <laughs> carry on don't oh they're humans uh, who cares That's yeah your, forget them you know, um, <laughs> so uh, nice. yeah but you're able to sort of, yeah, like you recognize sort of the, the cold weather gear, uh, which hasn't been sort of eaten or ravaged by time as much. So it seems to be what fresher. Um, mm-hmm. um, and then, of course, uh, they appeared like as you sort of walked through the winter festival, you're able to sort of recognize sort of what the dozens of East Haven were wearing. And these gentlemen seem to be similarly attired, though now they're just sort of. Oh, they've gone to pieces. Truth. Oh, maybe maybe we can take one of their coats. Mm. Is the um, is, is I don't the want sea, that coat. Is the sea hag still in one piece? I mean, yeah, no, she's got she's oh, yeah. she's she's a little charred and smoky, and she's got an arrow sticking through her. 
Oh, I see. I'm, an I'm, ear, I'm taking an the head. Ear, an ear necklace coming. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah. I knew it. All right. So, so all right. So you just whack. All right. Flynn, <laughs> Flynn takes Maud Chiselbone's head. Uh -huh. Sam says we could put her in the stew. <laughs> <laughs> oh. mm. I, um... Any, anybody for some Maud chili? No. I say good, good job, Tverio. Um, Maud chili brew. I uh, I will give her advice. All right, friends. So, are we? Uh, what's uh, sailing? Wait, let, here. Let, what are we doing? <laughs> am I am I quiet to everyone else? Oh, so you you were quiet. You to are me a bit just quiet. Then. Am I? Very very quiet right now. But still now, yeah. In a little bit. <sighs> You're closer to sultry. Ooh, I heard that. That's good. How about now? Is that better? Still it, the same? Yeah, it's a bit better, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, you still you still seem a bit soft. As if sort of whispering dulcetly from the window. <laughs> so well soft and snuggly. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, no. Like it's definitely like the sort of like you roll over and be like Hey, you want coffee? And be like, yeah, I want coffee. Thanks. Oh, there it is. That's, good. that's, that's, good there it is. that's the what do you want for lunch voice? Okay, good. That's yeah. <laughs> All right. What, uh, what, you, you were going to say something, though, Herrick? What is. Mm. Mm. Good. Mm. 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 So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna send Tempest up, <laughs> Tempest on up, and just have her look and report back to me. Excellent. So she's Especially, heading up to the north and around. Yeah, yeah. Well, or I mean, if it connects over here, yes. But we'll have so her just as, take a, a quick peek, and if there's this giant stash of gold, then we'll get that. But otherwise, yeah, right. Uh -huh. Everybody's right. We should probably just bug. So as Tempest comes up and over, it does, in fact, appear to connect over. Oh, reveal unto me the things I show to them. Thank you. All right. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was my that was my beef brief for beef foray. No, no. there was that that <laughs> whole that, that was. All right. So as Tempest flies up, she sees again the sort of the. Uh, the frozen lake that uh, the professor and uh, Zilvano would have recognized, or not Zilvano, uh, Faria would have recognized. And she yeah. says, uh, frozen lake appears to be the source of the river. Yeah, she has 120 feet, so she probably can see a little more than that. Oh, of uh, dark vision? Yeah. Uh, there we go. So... So you sort of reach out to her and say, are you sure? Is that all? She says, yes, it's a frozen lake. Mm. Definitely be the source of the river. It, it, I ask her, it looks like there's something in it. I'll, I'll tell everyone else it seems like a frozen lake that seems to would seem to wrap all the way around. She peers down. The giants. Frost giants. She says there are frost giants in the in the ice. Flynn, in the ice. In the uh, ice. I'm gonna move forward because this sounds interesting. Which point, Fairy? I was gonna be like, what? Why are we moving towards the frost giants? Didn't we but just over there? We did. Now there's. They want to go see. She, right, right. And she's so she and Flynn are having this moment where she's just like, <laughs> I, I don't know. They, they, they heard Frost Giants, and when I go look at Frost Giants, like they, they all saw what happened the last time we fought with the Frost Giant, right? And that mm -hmm. one was stuck in ice. Like, mm -hmm. So, my friends, as you, so these ones are, are sealed under under the lake, it looks yeah, like. So, who's who's checking out the uh, the, who's checking out the Frost Giants? Me, <laughs> I do, I do. I I'm I'm gonna hang back here with Fairyel just because she's kind of got the right idea. I think <laughs> All right. that's why I send my familiar. So uh, so Tempest sort of 
So she, she explains to you and professor, as you come around, you see that this underground river that you had been following, or you presume it was the river that you were following, yeah. uh, seems to be spilled into this pool, creating a, a, what looks to be like a mineral water bath. Um, but the river and the pool are now frozen entirely uh, so that it just is a solid chunk of ice. Um, but as the moonlight filters through the tops of the caverns and sort of lights the skulls as they are frozen forever in this sort of blue twilight, you see that there are four frost giant skeletons. Their outlines are barely visible, entombed in the ice. Um, All right. Let me you said there up. were, it was like a, a mineral pool. There are mineral deposits. Yes, it looks like from the uh, from the kind of looking at the sides of the cavern and whatnot, what isn't covered in the ice. Uh, it looks like there's sort of <clears throat> like the that those uh, ex extra salty mineral deposits that one. Yeah, pink salty. So, it's real healthy. Would this have been at some point some kind of like hot spring, possibly? Yes, that would be uh, that. That's a very fair assumption. Okay. Can you think? Can you open up a little more here, Ryan? Oh, absolutely. Mm. So who's a uh, who's who's scoot? Oh, are you saying Tempest yeah. out there? Well, yeah, and I actually moved up as well because it was intriguing. That did, yeah, okay. does it seem like they were they have slipped and fallen in? I mean, are they are they like kind of in struggly poses or were they in the hot springs when the when the rhyme came on and like trapped under the ice? Trapped at home. Make, ha, nice. Yes. So, Fair enough. That's oh, a that's true. a good that's a very good point. Absolu absolutely. So Herrick, our medicine cleric, everyone. That's, yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's the guy who handles the bones. All right. So um So how did they get in there? Make a They probably die first. Yeah. Ariel, she has to have <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> I'm going to walk out to the edge and I want to use my my little staff to my walking stick to tap the ice and see how solid wow. this is. Oh, be. good. He's using the stick. Are you going to wake him up or something? Yeah, I want to tap it just to see how solid this is. That's what she so you, you do that tap and like. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Uh, roll a. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, it, it's happening, Ryan. Did, did you roll an investigation there, Professor? Oh, did you actually? Did you ask for it? Okay, investigation. Let's investigation. go. Sixteen. Uh, a sixteen. Okay, so as you. That, that is a solid chunk of ice. And uh, true to Herrick's observation, if the skeletons had been, if the, the frost giants had been like flash frozen in it, the rhyme, uh, they would not necessarily, they wouldn't be the, the skeletons you see before you. So you have reason to believe that these frost giants were there, decomposed, and then the, the, when, the, when, when, Decom they, when the lake froze, froze over. Decom froze. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fell in, drowned, froze, and now. How deep do these caves go? In terms Very? of so our so if as you sort of as Tempest seems to venture out, uh, yeah, I'll say Tempest here. can give us a quick a quick layout, I guess. Yeah, so as, as she yeah, and, and I I will tell back to them what that that yeah. open part looks so like. So she there. pings out over here. She's like, it seems like the the. This this cave system seems to stop uh, here to the north, and then it looks like this, which is a continuation of the frozen river, uh, but it, it's, it's frozen solid. Like it, it, the the wall itself is just one giant block of ice, as if the water itself had frozen up and over, and so like you'd have to chisel through the rock or ch chisel through the the ice to get through uh, to what the uh, it sounds like maybe this is an underground spring, an underground yeah. river. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. <laughs> As 
Tarek just... All right, then. Yeah, something someone else said reminded me, uh, like, do they do they look like they've fallen in accidentally, or were they... Because, I mean, presumably, they were... Make a perception check. If we're going off uh, what he said, that they... 12. So with a 12, the poses, and again, you can only see sort of the faint outlines of the creatures, but they appear to be sort of almost laid out like they don't seem to be like in like a huddled or fetal position like the the skeletons you can see seem to almost have this sort of languid pose to them so they don't seem to be in a state of duress but when you drown and you know fall to the bottom of a a river lake you're not going to be like like no one you know freezes yeah necessarily that state but it doesn't appear to be a but without any, uh, it doesn't appear to be a a, 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 a a struggle that had occurred. But without closer inspection, you can't know for certain the, the cause of their death. Yes. I suspected these were. Yes, I suspect these were laid here with a purpose. This is all very fascinating, and I'll immediately tear out my journal and just start. Oh my god, is he journaling? Journaling madly. All right, let's figure out how to get this damn pot. Uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm done with that up there, and I, let's figure out how to get this pot up and out of here. All right, do, you, do you head back to so Flynn? You're uh, you're back with Fariel. Yeah. She's just. We should figure out how to get this cauldron out of here. And also how to get out of here. I think we can go back the way we came in, right? That's where the boat is. In theory, we've already killed everything that way. Yeah. I like this idea. (laughs) This is a good plan. (laughs) Uh, And I can also send Tempest ahead of us to uh, make sure that nothing has filled in. We saw that bridge, too, when we were coming in. Mm. There was a uh, there was a bridge that spanned the river at one point yes and True. i stopped i stopped tempest from going past it yeah man yes well the professor we... does not want to leave okay yeah no and i was like well yes we could stay here and poke around until we are killed by something else but the mission was to find the fisherman and we have and, and- and deal with the hag, which we have. Huh? Yes. I say, as <laughs> Flynn, you hold up that skull. So why are why are we in a hurry? The the fishermen yeah, are, yeah. are 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 done, and we're we won't be saving them, obviously. And it, I, there's there is a mystery here. Are we in a are we in such a hurry to get back? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> our mystery was the mystery of the missing fisherman yeah. and I just like gesture to the dead bodies <sighs> on the ground also also, does no one else remember the fact that you know we had a speaker who was murdered and that we still have to solve that mystery uh, there are invisible foes uh, back in the town um, let's see there is uh, we, we have any number of, of quests and, and investigations that we need to seek out professor the Bones in the ice aren't really a, a pressing concern. And I don't doubt for a second that they will still be here should you wish to return. Yes, you're right. You're right. I can I can I can make my way back to this to this place. That's it's quite all right. Just journaling madly, head down as he's continuing this conversation. Ariel looks over at Flynn. <laughs> But since, since I ha- will be of no use in carriage, I will s- attempt to not steer the professor into the wall as he's journaling. That's yeah, that's good. That's good. Oh, like by yourself with one hand, or <laughs> mm-hmm. well, all right. No, no. <laughs> all right. So uh, I'll, I'll put Tempest back out ahead of us. Yeah. So who who is carrying the cauldron? I mean, it's going to be a sort of a combination between Herrick and Silvana. 
Yeah, yeah. like <laughs> it, it's it's do, just do it's you, big though. It's but it's, a, but, it, but, it's a, but it's a five claw, like four foot, like it's it's just a cumbersome big ass kettle. <laughs> so you <laughs> I'll bring up the rear. I mean, we got. I've, I I could uh, you make like a carrying harness with like some good length of rope, so that way two people in front, one person in front, one person behind, can like tension it up off the ground and and like split the weight between the two of them. Oh, see, so, you now I like the idea of Herrick just sort of putting it over the top of his head and uh, like all like three and a half feet of it over top, <laughs> and he's just sort of walking. <laughs> yeah. Xander would be like, if you guys ever wonder what Toll the Dead sounds like, here it goes. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So, uh, Zavanna, Herrick, please go ahead and make me a athletics check. Athletics check. Get athletical. Athletical. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be good. Boom, oh, Zavanna coming out with the phone. <laughs> Um, should I use my D6 inspiration too? <laughs> so the the 17 beats the uh, beats the the check that you need to carry it through. The 11, however, does not. Oh, I'm sorry. The 12 does not. Um, so uh, you'll be rather than be able to make it through at normal speed, you're going to go at half. But you are able to sort of navigate it through, uh, both, focusing on both getting the the cauldron out and also the professor. Um, uh, with the safety and with, uh, with Tempest flying ahead and sort of keeping an eye out, like it doesn't appear like any further perils are going to be coming for you. Do we agree that we're taking the path that we came back? Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. Any, any further deviations or are we wishing to get out of the cauldron caves for now? I want to leave. I think we're, we're 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 talking about getting out, but on the way, I would like to say the so we have the three boats that we came in, but now we have a a, a large piece. The That's fisherman's true. the fisherman's boat was larger than the ones we were using, correct? True, but remember, you also had the three boats, but each boat was then also designed to carry an additional two people. So I think the boats themselves could carry four. Mm, okay, gotcha, gotcha. So, yeah, so, that, so I I I would I would posit that you could either have if you want to try to like put two boats together and carry the cauldron between the two boats or have one boat with the cauldron in it and the other two boats alongside it to sort of keep everything sort of stable and going forward since people tend to fall off boats. I don't know why. Can we take the oars off of the fisherman's boat and use that to strap across our boats? Yeah, to, absolutely. To, Go ahead. To make, and, uh, to make like a trireme kind of thing. Yeah. Roll me a... Oh. Give me a, uh, I want it to be like a, a survival doesn't seem quite right, but. Well, we're trying to survive the water home. I mean, right, I, I'm right. not, so, I'm not skilled in it. I'm, I, I'm, an, yeah. I, I'm an idea man, Ryan. Do you have man, like Ryan. carpenter's tools or tinker's tools? <laughs> man, no, so just, I just figured we would tie it on with rope. No, okay. Right. Right. Do you have right, any so. rope tools? <laughs> I have rope. rope tools. Oh God! So anyone have a? Anyone have like a rope craft? Anyone? No. Um, all right. So for anyone wishing to sort of lash together this sort of makeshift Icewind Dale catamaran, um, go ahead and I, I will help anyone that I can if it will give them advantage. I mean, it's, excellent. It's um, what the role is? Yeah. Give me a give me a survival check to sort of make sure that it's seaworthy, and. Um, well, hey, not bad with a with a with a dirty twenty from Herrick, so that will absolutely get your uh, your boat ship shape. Uh, and then from there, uh, you guys are able to go ahead and start making your row back to land. So, shall we? Uh, shall we get in the boats? Jace. Jace. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone remember the last time we got in boats? All right. So Well, the good thing is it's it's basically impossible to turn a trireme over. That's very true, but not impossible for someone to fall out of a trireme. Okay, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah you, <laughs> you, you got me you there. for sure okay. are true on that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, All right, friends. So, uh we'll go ahead and just do a good old-fashioned group roll. So, uh I need everyone to uh 
What do I want? Uh, give me. Uh, so we're gonna do a team survival check, and then if anyone Ooh, fails okay. that team survival check, we'll need a. Uh, now the team survival check will be done at advantage because you are all oh. catamaraned together yes. in the trireme. But uh, which means if you fail that, then um, you need to make a deck save. How do All I right. do the? How do I do the one with advantage again? Eleven. Shift, hold shift, and then it should turn from the Ooh, twenty-sided right. die to a Excellent. plus, a green so, plus. Oh, it's I've not looking good. A success, a six, uh, uh, a ten from Flynn, an eleven from Herrick, an eleven from the professor, uh, nine from Xander, an eighteen from Zelvana, and Flynn. of course, <laughs> here I am, chatting my life away, and uh, not making a survival check for. With it, with advantage, nice uh, <laughs> and a critical. Holy moly! Twenty six from Fairy Isle. So that means, um, so we are able to. So these boats have a smooth sailing for the most part. However, Xander, I will need a dexterity. Uh, can can so, Fairy Isle not have grabbed me? Well, we'll find out if you uh, if you fail this roll. So we'll go ahead and roll a dex saving throw. Dex save. Dex save. You got this. You got this. You got this. An 11. Does he got this? <laughs> so with the crit save, Fariel's... <laughs> damn it. All right, so Fariel also rolled an 11 on her crit save. Uh, That's 22, her, right? That's 22? Her, her deck save. <laughs> um, which is uh, not enough to, uh, to... Oh, no, no, wait. It is enough. Yeah, that's good. Okay, excellent. So with the 11 and the 11, I say she manages to, to pull you back from the brink as you start to do, oh, oh, oh. So she grabs you, sits you back down, and you are able to make the journey back to East Haven Dock, uh, uh, skidding into the ice. And then, of course, do you drag the boats back with you to the dock? Remember that you took them from the, uh, the ferry. Or do you leave them out there on the ice? No, nope, put them back when we found them. Yeah, we'll drag them back. Yeah, That's good. Back. That's good. I appreciate that. that, that tis a kindness. All right, friends. What was that? <laughs> uh, I am wearing Tessa's hoodie. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Says, uh, initiative roles, not gender roles. Boom. Uh, Aww. She, I know, right? she asked about you. Oh. Um, Did she ask so, if I was wearing a hoodie? Yeah. No. No. Uh, so the after after nearly going into the drink, uh, I'm the whole way home. I'm I'm very kind of like shaken and quiet. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's my demon. <laughs> um, still. Still, yeah, you're just, you're just a soft-spoken, gentle giant. So there's nothing wrong with it. Right. On the ro- on the road back, Reginald is also <clears throat> kind of giving Flynn the side eye. Question, DM: Would I have recognized the abilities that Flynn has manifested recently for what they are, based on things? <laughs> Based on my past experiences, Things would I have stuff? recognized his abilities? Based on your past experiences, I wouldn't say per se. But go okay. ahead and roll me. Uh, I, I, you wouldn't be able to be like, aha, it is the school of this. But like, no, you've certainly seen things yes so roll i'm trying I, I mean roll i'm me trying, I'm trying not advantage. to play out of care uh, what's a, what's a, which one roll me a history check with advantage gotcha see if his story adds up 17 right. lovely as it adds up to a 17 uh you you do recall seeing um people use such abilities before Though uh, none of them were anywhere near as nice as Flynn. Got it. All right. That's all I needed to know. Does okay. Flynn know what abilities he's using? <laughs> 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 all 
you know, so, from, from stuff and things. Yeah. So, uh, because, yeah, stuff and things. Yeah. So, secret secrets, everybody. Flynn, you'll get one. So this one's for this one's for Flynn. So everyone, headphones <laughs> off. All right. Is everybody? Is he headphones off? Yeah, headphones <laughs> off for <laughs> secret secrets. This one's gonna be for Flynn. Okay, I think we're. Is it good? All right. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um. So as the boat sort of sails back towards East Haven, you, you draw back into your mind that moment where the wolf with the third eye spoke to you and said to reach out. Um, and inside your head, again, you, you feel that connection to that, that creature. He says, hello. Hi. Come on now. Surely you remember me? You, you, you can't, can't be. How, how, how are you? How, not corporeal. How do, how do you, how do you exist in this, in, in this form outside of, you know, your body? <laughs> This is a style that was taught to me by my commander. And now, having seen you express such abilities, I pass it on to you. You called to me, Flynn. Wow. Um, this is a surprise in many things. Uh, one of which I didn't think you would still be alive and I didn't know our order had this ability. Well, um, I'm not. Not all in the order have access to such skills, and it calls to a very specific few. I recognize it in you and knew that maybe someday it would manifest. But maybe not. So I thought it best not to rattle your brain and, uh, give you any further nightmares what me rattled no, uh, <laughs> no. Yeah. then just just watch how loudly you're talking out loud to yourself right now you can speak inside your mind gotcha this is gonna take some work but mm -hmm. no it feels right like it makes sense you know exactly exactly we're doing the wolf guard proud keep it up and I'll be here. Oh, no. Should you have any oh, questions, no. just reach out. Thank you, old friend. Good to see you, young pup. Keep your fangs sharp. Will do. He's gone. Just want to say thank you to Tess, who's donated three dollars <gasps> for Ooh. some inspiration. Is she spending your money, Ryan? Was she what? Money? <laughs> <laughs> she's not spending my money. I have none. <laughs> that's why thank he you. steals her hoodie. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Ryan actually doesn't have his own clothes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, Tess. If everyone would like to roll a D twenty, if you haven't, if you've already got a D six inspiration. Then you don't need to roll. All right. Now, because it's test, do I get advantage on this roll? Is that how I got a ten. No, you get disadvantage oh. because you're wearing oh, a I'm jumper. I'm tied with Herrick. Does anyone else have it? You got disadvantage. You're wearing a jumper. How dare you? Oh, this is oh, oh, no. Flynn. Flynn. <laughs> Coming in with a fourteen. Uh, <laughs> Fariel or oh, my, she can't. She can't use it. She's not here. Oh, oh, oh uh, I think. Oh no, she she doesn't have one yet. You're right. You're right. You're right. So let's 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 do one for Fairyel. All right. So Fairyel with a D twenty. I mean, she can't use it. No. Yeah. She, she can. She can use it. Yeah. 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 Forget yeah. her anyway. So yeah. yeah. So, so Flynn. congratulations, Flynn wins it. Flynn with the win. <laughs> well done, Flynn. Well done, Flynn. Well All done, right, friend. So uh, you get yourselves back to the East Haven ferry, and as you come into town, uh, everyone. Uh, 
take stock of the party around you. You notice that, I believe, uh, both Xander and the professor seem to be a little, uh, little more than glad to be back on dry land. Um, Eric, how, how is uh, how's our cleric doing? He's looking forward to getting paid and getting a getting an owl down him. Now, did you still have? Now, is Zalvana still wearing your coat? When he says an owl, I look over at him. <laughs> um, if she's still wearing it, yeah, it's fine. Because she wasn't here for that, though, so she would. That's right. That. That's right. So Zalvana, last game, uh, as we tried to recover from the the little dip that both you and I think Fariel took. Mm-hmm. Um, there was some tender undressing, let's yeah. say. Yes. So, uh, Herrick had offered you his jacket with consent. Cold weather gear. It was uh, completely consensual because his stuff was dry. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Appreciate um, it. And so, as you go to, I assume, return the coat to him. Well, is Herrick wearing it? Because obviously, Herrick's probably not wearing any coat gear then. Because <laughs> unless that it was, was still wet. And that is the point I was getting to. Hmm. Is that Herrick hasn't been wearing his cold weather gear. Oh, aren't you cold? All right, friends. Now that you're back in town, where do you wish to go? You know, of course, uh, on the map we have the White Lady Inn, the Town Hall, uh, stables, and the East Way, East Haven Ferry. I, uh, I think we should go to Town Hall and awesome. check in with Indra and give her the coat from the fisherman we took. And yeah, uh, so fruitly. And the, are we keeping the cauldron or are we giving them the cauldron? I think we should give, hopefully, for recompense, the cauldron. Because yeah. I don't know that we, I don't know that we want to. I mean, build a sled to carry the cauldron with us everywhere we go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're the cauldron crew. Yeah. No. We've got to climb down this ladder with the cauldron. It'd be like a food truck. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! It's ice wind pale. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is there a drink here called the Ice Wind Pale Ale? Uh, well, they're not oh. now. There is. <laughs> oh, yes. Next time you hit up the white, the wet trout, you'll uh, get yourself some Ice Wind Pale Ale. Right. Uh, you wouldn't catch me dead in the white trout. The wet trout. <laughs> well, we, we might catch you dead there, but yeah, all right. Sure. So, friends, go ahead and uh, drop yourselves in to the the town hall. And as you uh, y- you come oh, through the doors, the door. uh, Imdra is there, and she says, "Oh, thank the gods, you're back." Uh, what news? I, it was a sea I, hag. And I, I I kind of grievously or gravely hand her the <clears throat> one of the jackets from one of the fish, and, and I just shake my head. No survivors. No. No, there there was a sea hag using this this cauldron of plenty and it let's just say you should wash this before you use it. Well we have, we have plenty of cauldrons. I, I don't think I need one that is sea hag. No, a magical one. It's magic. It's, it's it's a magic cauldron. And I will explain to her its properties. But for for realsies, wash it. Like when you I think it's clean, that. wash it one more time. I mean, well, uh, well, that's that is wondrous. One one second, I'll uh, I'll um, uh, Cyril, go and uh, <clears throat> go and get the uh, the speaker. Uh, uh, you'll see a little <laughs> assistant, uh, assistant over here. Be like, uh, uh, of course, of course, Captain, and she'll uh, this, head on the speaker up the stairs. I. Uh, Yes, well, in, in, emergency speaker, as it was, and ah. so uh, as Speaker Whalen is, of course, as you know, deceased. Um, Prudence has had to step into his place, um, so she's acting speaker, as it was. But it, ah, gotcha, gotcha. A mouthful to say, acting speaker of the town. So I just, I just was curious how long we were gone for. If there had been an election and everything, uh, uh, sort of a, a in, informal passing until the, the, the people of the town can go ahead and get a formal uh, hearing 
going, but oh, blood ranks for for, for, for the time being. Well, that is, and so uh, Prudence, uh, Speaker Prudence Tarpaul, uh comes on down from the steps, followed by Cyril, and says, uh, "Cyril informs me that you have returned, Imdra. What is what's?" Why do you need me? Surely you can handle this. She's like, this cauldron. And then she explains to Prudence the properties of it. She's like, my God, that that changes everything. We, we'll, we'll be able to survive the rhyme. We'll, oh my God. Uh, well, I, I, uh, I, I would say the one thing that we ask, and we haven't discussed this, so my party may not agree, but don't, you should give people food. Don't, don't don't sell them food. Don't don't extort them out of what they don't already have. Oh, I see. I see. Be- or just there, keep it. Is there? A, well, I, I mean, I I would happily pay you for for the cauldron if you wish. I mean, have you? I'm so sorry, uh, Captain Imdra. And she, and Imdra sort of comes over. No. I, yes, of course. I'm sorry. I'm forgetting things in lieu of the miraculous news that you bring us. Um, you were promised uh, payment for uh, handling of the <clears throat> sea hag. Sea hag. Uh, I will see that you are paid what you were offered. Um, I believe it was a, a monetary sum. Yes? She kind of looks at you guys like uh, let's see. Uh, I, 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 I j- I'm sorry. I'm trying to, I'm trying to look through my notes and it's like, <laughs> <laughs> like uh, didn't write it down. I don't know. It I wasn't, didn't... it was, it was magical items. Right? Oh, magical items. Yeah, it was. <clears throat> uh, no, I, I'm sure we don't have any magical items. But, oh, yes, uh, you do. Certainly. No, I I the, I believe that you were thinking when we were in Bryn Shander. That was sorry. But, yes, it's been, uh, rest it's, assured, I will get your payment to you. Um, yes, we just we we want to make sure that the people here are not taken advantage of. So please give them all the stew they can eat, but just don't don't sell them stew and and not sell them something they can't afford. Prudence, I, we'll I know you. Asking. I know you're the acting speaker, but. It's what the one thing that we ask. No, I I, I understand, and of, and of course your your generosity is uh, to be commended. But the moment anyone finds out about the cauldron, uh, I mean, I, I fear we'll we'll have riots. That we'll have we'll have refugees from all over Icewind Dale's pouring into East Haven, and and even though yes, it is a miraculous item and able to feed. The town, I'm not sure if it would be able to feed all of the Dale. No, no, it certainly won't. It'll only feed 120 people at each feeding. That's how much it was. I, I of course, will uh, I will not charge anyone for it, but I... Uh, Do I believe her? Uh, go ahead and roll an insight check. How many people live in East Haven? 17. Do we know? Uh, 17. With a 17, you believe that she will not charge. <laughs> For, uh, the, so the entire population of East Haven is about currently 750. Yeah. So the, the, the towns themselves are not, you know, massive metropolises. Uh, the, no, 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 no. The, the, the largest of them all, Bridge Shander, has uh, a population of uh, 1,200. So, like, we're not talking about, you know, we're not trying to, you know, feed New York, but... No, no, no. Um, but it's definitely not enough to feed everyone in East. Exactly. Asia. That's the that's the thing. And yeah. So. Right. Well, so it uh, feeds uh, 360 and, people a day. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Right. Right. Which which is still, that's great, but... Wait, oh, no, know, that's I, I guess, that's I, guess I guess my I guess my hope and my thought would be that since it is not completely game changing like if it was feeding 5000 people a day absolutely maybe, maybe that makes it a lower priority target on anyone's radar and then she's got a little like uh prudence gets a little bit of a of an epiphany what if we set up uh 
um, like a, a, a food a station or, or perhaps a, a service line. I mean, we, we don't tell them about the cauldron per se, but we just make it available to people and so that they don't need to necessarily know about the magical properties, just that we have food available. And so and we make say, food. Put it behind a kitchen somewhere and just say you're opening up a soup kitchen. Indeed. If, if we keep it between us here and then say that we open up the soup kitchen in East Haven for all who are hungry, then, you know, we'll, we'll say, oh, we've been able to make the soup and, and and we'll feed as many as we can each day and do the best we can to keep the Dale alive. And then that way, no one need know about the magical properties. And Indra's like that will require a lot of security. It, it can be done, but I, I fear that someone will eventually find out. But that is a problem for us to solve when it that becomes a problem. Regardless, you, my friends, have gifted us a fantastic boon to East Haven and to the Dales, and I thank you. Um, the speaker, uh, perhaps some uh, payment is in order? Oh, of, of course, of course, of course. I, I will uh, happily pay you all uh, for... The, the cauldron itself. Um, Wasn't this the place for the magical items then? Is, is, <clears> this, is, this, yeah. is, this, is this Jade because asking? or This is, is this... Jade asking, yeah. Oh, yeah, it, it, it is, but Indra yeah. has given us the side eye and warned us off of that, so I'm rolling oh, okay. with it. <laughs> <laughs> Good, I was going to say, like, if Herrick brings it up again, like, Indra's going to be like... Oh, no, I thought you would... Yeah, I was like, <laughs> am I getting my wires crossed? <laughs> no, 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 you're, exa you're exactly right, but she gave me the side eye and and a, and a head shake and so i changed uh... uh i can give you i can give you 500 uh in in gemstones for it but i i will need to gather those before i'm actually able to give it i'll need a few days to actually acquire the money if that's uh, acceptable to you I, I i will look to the group especially since it's gemstones i will look to herrick I mean, <laughs> uh, um... <laughs> We oh, can yes, stay in yes. town for a couple of days. I mean, there's Actually, still there's still the Duragar that uh, that ca the captain had discussed maybe us uh, looking into as well. And, so yeah, I, and I'm just like not to mention the fact that we still have to figure out who murdered the former speaker. Correct. But uh, so uh, if you find people will give us two days, forty eight hours to get the uh, the money together, speaker. Tarkwald, I'm sure we'll be able to. Uh, we'll, we'll meet you back here. In the meantime, would you like us to? I, mean, I can lock the cauldron in the in the, uh, the the jail cells below to keep it safe. Or if you yourselves wish to, that seems a bit conspicuous to be lugging a giant kettle around. But. You, you you keep it, but like yeah. put it like in a storeroom. Like act like it's a regular cauldron. I don't like. It looks like a thing. Oh, no, that's. <laughs> That's that's a fantastic idea. We'll just put it in the chair room. No one ever goes in there. And maybe put a uh, a regular cauldron downstairs, locked up in the jail cell, and then have <laughs> I mean, and then have this one stashed somewhere that no one will ever go. Hmm. Paint nope. this one like a regular cauldron and paint, <laughs> paint the, the regular cauldron the side to look of it like and... this one. <laughs> I think I need some magic drink. on the yes. side of it with the yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, also, did y'all not need proof of job completion? Because I got it. I got the head. The what? The, the, no. the, the, the see. Uh, look, look it, jobs I take. You need the, proof of your proof of job completion. So I brought the hag's head. The the sea hag is what uh, took the fisherman and you pretty much warn any... people before you just kind of whip that out there, Flynn. <laughs> Uh, and <laughs> wow and any, any anyone that uh that you feel has been lost along that that route there were numerous uh bodies parts of bodies it's 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 been a, a racket for quite some time well that saves me from having to uh, say gather up the troops and go hunt this creature down i thank you again you've done a fantastic service and rest assured you will be paid for your service no, shoot to look to herrick <laughs> uh, we did. We did have to kill a skeleton frost giant as well. That was good fun. True. Yeah, yeah we. Yeah, he had a bone to pick with us. 
<laughs> I don't get it. I don't think Indra mm. found that funny. Sorry, Captain. Look, um, uh, uh, <laughs> Cyril up on the platform is like uh, a bone. <laughs> he gets it. He gets it. Uh, well, I, I I think we may may go, may go have a bite to eat at the at the the White Lady. Excellent. Uh, I'll um. Oh I'll, God. Uh, I'll see these uh, these fine people out, uh, Speaker, if that's all right. And uh, Cyril, uh, make sure that she um, y- you give her all the help she needs uh, in gathering the money for the cauldron payment. And mum's the word. Yes, put this somewhere where no one will go and just protect it. Of course, of course. And um, and uh, so then, the, as uh, again, thank you so much for all the help you've done for East Haven. And for me, I thank you. And she uh, moves off towards her office, and Cyril, of course, follows quickly behind. Uh, Imra says, Through the walls? Is she a ghost? Well, so technically, this, this stairwell walks up to the second floor, so there are little doors at the top. Ah, uh, yeah. I didn't even... I know, right? Right? You don't... You sit there and go like, oh, well, that doesn't go anywhere. And then it's just like, oh, upon further inspection of the map, there are more floors. Um... So Indra walks up to you and says, I thank you for your discretion. If you wait here a moment, I will recover those items. And she turns and sort of heads back down uh, this hallway here. And you uh, you have a few moments to yourselves. Is anybody else getting little weird vibes from the speaker? Yeah. and, and I get fact- weird vibes from this whole place. Doc, the- you are a weird vibe. <laughs> <laughs> And and the fact that the uh, the captain is is doing this on the down low without the speaker's knowledge that that seems a little odd. Yes, we I should think agree. on that. Not that I can sense her coming back. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> We've done our job. Yeah, we still got to get paid though, Eric. Still got to get paid though. Oh, you know, couple of days here. Who cares? Well, we're gonna, we're gonna tell the story to Ronaldo and uh, let him journal about it. All, all right. right. <laughs> so uh, we had a few items left over from that last wizard that we. Anyway, um, he had this and um, and this, and so she she pulls out uh, what appears to be like a small gray satchel, and then uh, what is very clearly a scroll. She's like, I, I don't know what these are or what they do. I assume she kind of looks at Xander. You might know, but these are just a few of the items we took off them. We have some more uh, around here, but I, I don't know where they would have put them. Uh, like perhaps a week away. or uh, it was a scroll and what else? Was a that? gray, a gray satchel, a gray sack, a gray sack. sack. Um, yeah. Well, uh, again, we're we're this this is great, and and we're here um for for a couple of days. What did you find from questioning the the Durgar? Ah, nothing much. I'm afraid. And, and DM, are we getting both of those items, DM, or are we choosing between them? I say, uh, you you get access to both of those items. Okay. Great. So, I put my hand uh, inside the un- sack. What's that? I put my hand inside this, the sack. It's Excellent. like it's like Jack's 2.0 right now. I love it. All right. So as you reach, <laughs> so as you reach inside the sack, you actually pull out a small fuzzy object. It's uh, seeing him do that. What I know then full what of lit balls. Uh, go ahead and roll me an Arcana check. May I assist or roll one as well? You absolutely may assist on the Arcana check. All right. <laughs> bam, 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 bam. All right. Oh wait. So, my bad. Uh, Xander's assist was an uh, so it's, with the assist, Professor Xander's was an eighteen. Yes. With that eighteen, both of you recognize this to be a bag of tricks. In particular. Because of its color, it is a gray bag of tricks. Uh, and do I know what the animal list for that is? Uh, I, I, well, 
I'll certainly. I'll say, I'll say, Herrick, don't, don't, don't let go of that just yet. Uh, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. wait. It, uh, it, the balls of fluff turn into magical animals, but sometimes they're large, like an axe beak. <laughs> oh. oh. I mean, rather toss it. Or I mean, can we put it back? Can you just put it back in the bag? Can we keep it and name it Paul? Oh, so you, you can. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Uh, you, you can indeed put the, the fuzz balls back inside uh, the, the sack. So. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll look at the list now for the gray one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the gray one. Uh, so uh, the, for those of you who don't know what a bag of tricks is, it's a fantastic item. It's a wondrous, uncommon item. This ordinary bag made of gray, rust, tan, or cloth appears empty. When you reach inside, it reveals the presence of a small fuzzy object. You can use an action to pull the object from the bag and throw it 20 feet. When the object lands, it transforms into a creature by rolling a D8. Now, uh, this creature can, from the gray bag of tricks, either be a weasel, a giant rat, a badger, a boar, a panther, a giant badger, a dire wolf or a giant elk. And this creature is friendly to you and your companions oh. and it acts on your turn. You can use a bonus action to command your creature how it moves or what action it takes on its turn or to give it general orders such as attack your enemies. In absence of such orders, the creature acts after a fashion appropriate to its nature. Once three fuzzy objects have been pulled from the bag, it cannot be used again until the next dawn. And the creature vanishes at dawn or when it's reduced to zero hit points. Yes, the creature vanishes at the next dawn or when it is reduced to zero hit points. No. So basically, I just got a bag of MPC. So we can't items. cook them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's... Well, if you kept it alive. I get. <laughs> I guess you could. Cook well, you, you could cook it and eat it, but then at dawn, you're instantly hungry again. Yeah, but the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's sort of like that takeout thing where they're just like, oh, man, I'm hungry again. It's like, yeah. Actually, I get you. You couldn't cook it because when you killed it to butcher it, it would then it's disappear. Yeah. Yeah, you would right? have to you'd have to carve off a piece of it without killing it. Yep. Yeah. Oh, it's this like is getting thinking. dark. It is. This is getting it dark. It definitely is. <laughs> Gentlemen, welcome to Icewind Dale. <laughs> On that um, note, can I look at the scroll and possibly determine what uh, what spell is on there? Uh, do you go ahead? Uh, I'd like to to take it and open it up and look at it. What that does is up to you. You go mad. <laughs> uh, go ahead. And that's how we burned the town hall down. Yeah, right. <laughs> It's like, you guys have done such wonderful things for the town of East Haven. Oh, this scroll is for explosive runes. Wait. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> hey, do y'all remember East Haven? Yeah, they read a scroll. That's why I don't read. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, sorry, I just... Uh, Samus. Uh, what sort says, of shenanigans? It's, he said it's a bag of cuddles. He would throw the ball out and then command it to snuggle. Oh, oh. I mean, give me your giant elk. Snuggle me. Oh, but the giant rat or badger? Mm, badger. <laughs> yeah. So, um, as you open it up and take a look at it, it appears to be just incomprehensible. Great. While he has it open, can I take a look over his shoulder? I'm gonna say I'm a I'm gonna show it to uh, the other the other spellcasters and say uh, absolutely. So this, uh, look, this look familiar to anybody? So uh, it's to and again, correct me if I'm wrong on this. So Xander, as you read it, you, you instantly recognize the scroll of Fireball. Fireball. <laughs> Which, to my knowledge, uh, you as a warlock professor don't have access to. Correct. Correct. Okay. Cool. So. All right, so uh, yeah, so. That, that there's a scroll of fireball. That there's yeah. a scroll. <laughs> Would have been handy to have that earlier. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a bit out of my wheelhouse, but uh, I'm sure you can make use of it. Well, uh, I, I don't know what it was, but uh, rest assured, I don't usually pay people before the job is done, but I'm glad the job is done. Thank you all. Um, well, she does. <sighs> Is there anything else I can I can help you with, or uh... yeah, you were going to tell us what you got from the prisoner? Oh, actually, if you want to come with me, 
I can. You can go ahead and have a chat with him if you'd like. Oh yes. Uh, absolutely. Excellent. Excellent. So, uh, right this way. Uh, but, do you mind bringing the cauldron? It'd just be easier. Oh, uh, bring it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, okay. Sure. Yeah. All right. So, uh, uh, he- come on, Her- 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 Herrick, uh, Z- Zalvana. Yeah, yeah, of course, sure. of course. Uh, <laughs> We've of only lugged it about fucking ten miles. <laughs> so, friends, uh, as you go ahead and make your way over here to uh, the dungeon steps, as all of you, uh, make where your- is ah uh, uh, to the bottom bottom right? Yeah, but no. I want to ask about the statue in this room before we go too much further. Huh. Yes. Oh, he's got a journal again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm like sketching the details of this thing. Gotta use that book what? as fire. Fire material. What? what can you tell us about this? Is this? Is it? What's the statue look like? Yeah, well, I just want to know what it is. So, I was going to say, so as, as you walk into uh, what is known as uh, so the, there's this sort of a large open room that has four pillars and in the middle of it is uh, this dark, almost onyx stone figurehead that is sitting there uh, like a low burning candle casts a gentle glow upon a tall black object in the center of this room. Although one could easily mistake it for a statue, it is actually the figurehead of a ship and it's carved in the likeness of a winged demon. This demon-shaped figurehead stands eight feet tall, and, and shards of wood sort of jut out of the demon's back at the points where the figurehead was once attached to the hull of the ship. Lashed to the front of the figurehead is a scrawny woman with her hair dripping wet. And her long, flowing braids fall in front of her face like this as she is lashed to the front of the prow of the ship. Like a real woman, or it's carved in there? It, it is definitely not stone. Like, it, this this frail woman has, like, lashed herself to this statue. For all intents and purposes, it looks like someone's mounting a, a protest or something of the sort. Yeah, uh, I'm stepping closer. Everyone, I go ahead say, can I, what? everyone go ahead and make me a... Uh, anyone who wishes to make me a history check on the figurehead. 21. 15. Oh, 11. Oh, dang it. Mm. <laughs> With a 21, Professor, you realize that the figurehead depicts Urtu, a Valor demon that terrorized Icewind Dale over a century ago. Characters who grew up in Icewind Dale would know this creature very well. It's a very intimidating sort of a boogeyman monster from Icewind Dale's path, past. And as you get closer to the lady, suddenly her hair pulls back from her face. And for a moment, you recognize the Lady of Loch Dinesher. The lady. Uh, it's the ghost. And as she does this, her face peels back off of her skull and she screams at you and just, ah, and like the entire room reverberates and everybody, uh, I need you all to go ahead and give me a wisdom saving throw. But before we do the wisdom save, is the captain in the room with us and seeing this happen? Nope. And has so the captain doesn't see any of this. So as you all sort of peer in and see this creature peel back its skull, she is just sort of. Are you coming? What? Hold on, we have to do a wisdom save first. What, what, what is the meaning at? of this? Yeah, does she not? Does she not hear this scream? Sorry, so what, I, no, what's the save wisdom? So as the scream goes off. That is where we will end tonight's game. Oh no! Are uh, we doing? Are we doing the wisdom saves or not? I've done uh, it. I already rolled it. <laughs> done it. You know then what? I, you, then I'm you... gonna roll mine. <laughs> nice. Okay. So for the wisdom saves, looks like we've got ooh, a 19, a 20, a 16, 17. a 19, a 17. Damn. Fairyel okay. needs to roll. 
So, Ferial does need to roll. You are correct. You are but correct. I'm well, should we let Amy evolve. roll next week? Let Amy roll. Oh me. yeah, let Amy roll next week. Yeah, yeah it's a good, oh, good yeah, jump, <laughs> jumping in moment. Let's let like Amy jump into a, to a ghost fight. So yes, yeah. so uh, so as, I, as you all, I feel like we've all saved. So. Um, just quickly though, Ryan, would we have all managed to like a short rest in the boats? Short rest is at least an, an hour. hour. An hour, yeah. And everybody passed uh, survival. So you didn't. Th- Yes, I would say everyone would, would have gotten at least a short rest. Because uh, in, in theory, you could have had at least one person steering the boat since they were all tied together. There's there's a level of like everyone working together for that. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll buy that. Everyone got a short rest. Cool. So for a short rest, go ahead and at the top of your pages, click to make sure. What do I get from a short rest? I get my... Divinity thing back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I am not going to spend a hit die, but I will do our... Oh, can I get my level 2 solo? solo? Oh, yeah, man. You guys all you guys all passed that with, like, flying colors. So, well done. That is fantastic. Um... Okay, so yeah, for... I'm gonna get one of my my second level spell slots back. All right, so you have a short rest, and at the start of the next game, you will be dealing with the ghost of the lady, the white lady of Locked and Share. White lady that that the captain mm-hmm. can't see somehow. Yes. Great. Go. Cool. Right, did guys. she did, did she walk straight past this like statue? As if, it, as if it was totally not there at all. So, no, the statue she's aware of. Okay. So she kind of, you know, like, as she walked past it, she kind of made the sort of office, like, oh. Oh, that's, a, that's our demon statue. We keep it she's here like, for fun. <laughs> it's like this damn thing. Another group of adventurers brought it in, uh, trying to get some money Why? for it. And the speaker, having no place to put it, put it right here. <laughs> This used to be where we ate lunch, but not yeah. anymore. This <laughs> was the cafeteria, but then it got all kind of cold yeah. and creepy. No one could figure it out. We'll save or die. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I don't know if that is true. Um, 